NASCAR pulls into Richmond, Virginia, the state capital filled with history, beautiful architecture, and of course, great nighttime racing. Richmond located smack in the middle of the state of Virginia, the state that saw the end of the Revolutionary War and the end of the Civil War when brother went against brother. And tonight on the track, brother will go against brother once again. The Burton brothers, Levante brothers, all three Wallace brothers. On this short track, Saturday night's all right for race car fighting is more than 100,000 will witness this title now. And FX brings you the Pontiac Excitement 400. We're excited here at the Hollywood Hotel, and you should be too. It's NASCAR's biggest stars under the stars. Hi, I'm Chris Myers, just above Victory Lane at the Richmond International Raceway. And tonight, it's the first Winston Cup race on FX, the first night race of the year, and it's the first time in a long time Jeff Hammond spent a Saturday night chasing cars instead of something else. A man called... <laughs> I can't uh, uh, I can't uh, because uh, I uh, care. Uh, uh, you know that. Now, uh, they're excited. It's good to talk I'm racing. I'm going to get Tony Stewart here. <laughs> oh, don't do that. That's <laughs> trouble. All right, caution is out. All right, well, Daryl and Jeff, of course, familiar faces. Let's talk about this track. That's a driver's track, but how is this a fan's track? at a fan's race. It's real simple. The lights are on. Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace. You got a situation right here with Jeff Gordon. These guys are all Saturday night racers, and they're back here on tracks that they cut their teeth on. I'm telling you, they love this place. I love this place. Yeah, and you enjoy driving here. Well, the thing about it, you can see things at night, believe it or not, that you can't see in the daytime. You can see the sparks flying off of the bottom of the cars and off the side of the cars. You can Smoke see the out of your ears. brake rotors. <laughs> you can see right. how the brake rotors. There's so many things that the night lights prevail. All right. Fun. And six drivers uh, in the race uh, tonight that are from the state of Virginia. That's the most of any state represented and uh, Ward Burton, one of those. Last Sunday in California, he took a very hard hit into the wall, had a grade two concussion, was in the hospital. He's okay. He'll start in this race. He's standing by with our Genie Zalasco. Thanks, Chris. Ward, I know that you've been cleared by a doctor to be here to race today, but you've said yourself that your neck, your, your chin still a little bit sore on a short track. Can you make it the whole race? That's what everyone wants to know. Oh, yeah, I feel like I can. Uh, my neck's not really that sore. I've uh, gotten a little work on it this week. And, uh, you know, ever since I got out of the hospital, I've progressed a lot. I feel pretty good. I'm not a 100%, but uh, if we get that call a little bit better than what last night, we can still have a good run. We're going to just try to stay out of trouble. And we just little need some good things to happen. Last week, we were running good at all people, Mark Martin. You know, never would think of Mark because he's such a great racer. But... Uh, you just never know in this sport. Uh, we just need a little good things to happen, but uh, I'm feeling good, and I'm planning to go all the distance. All right, Ward, we're glad you're doing better. And, Chris, by the way, the rumor that there's a backup driver that has been flown here, 22-2 a team telling me, no, that is that is not true. Ward's going to go the distance. All right, thanks, Judy and Ward. Yeah, and Daryl's ready, just in case. <laughs> Need Ward, to jump in that Ward car. didn't look very happy about that backup <laughs> driver. <laughs> that was news to him, I can see that. Uh, he'll help you out. You, you drove in pain. You guys worked together. Uh, yeah. Daryl, where's the, where's the cutoff? I mean, athletes play in pain. Drivers are athletes. But at what point do you draw the line? Everybody wants you to get in the car. The team wants you to get in the car. The sponsor wants you to get in the car. Everybody wants you to get in the car. They don't care how bad you hurt. There's the, everything hinges around the driver. All the points that the team gets depends on that driver starting that race. So they'll stuff you in there when you really don't want to get in there, but it's for the team. Would you dare do that with him? I've done it before. I'm really? telling you right now, this man here back in Pocono, he had his leg broke. He could not hardly get up, much less get in a car. Broken ribs, broken arm. We stuffed him down in that car with tears running down his face because he needed to drive the car for the team and for himself. These guys are superhuman. Yeah, and they are. They And they handle the track that way. We're glad to see Ward back on the track. And when we return, we're going to feature the latest information in the Dale Earnhardt investigation, including an exclusive interview with NASCAR President Mike Helton. He'll address the question, is there a cover-up? We've got you covered as we count down to the start of the first night race of the year. Mark Martin starting from the pole. You're watching NASCAR Winston Cup Racing on FX. Hang around. We'll be back in a moment. FX welcomes you back to Richmond, getting a little closer to the race. Fans remembering Dale Earnhardt and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Of course, Jr. won this race a year ago, and in the last, uh, that was in the last four races this year, Jr.'s moved up 16 places in the points race, and this will be the 50th start of his promising Winston Cup career. The aftermath of Dale Earnhardt's fatal accident in Daytona came to a head here in Richmond this weekend. And while NASCAR has targeted August as the time they hope to release their findings, the questions and the controversy continue. NASCAR's week didn't start off in California, but in the Orlando Sentinel, Sunday it was reported an EMT at the crash site insists Earnhardt's seatbelt was not broken. It was hard to get loose, but as hard as I was pulling on it, 
if it had been broken, the strap would have come on over to the, to the right side. There's no way that belt was broken. Probst also said he was never questioned by NASCAR. A groundswell of suspicion quickly began to take form, but Tuesday it stalled when Dale Jr. spoke out. I know what the facts are, and uh, so it's not, to me, I'm not sitting here waiting for an answer like y'all are. You know what I'm saying? I know what the answer is. Thursday, Bill Simpson, who manufactured Earnhardt's seatbelt, tried to meet with NASCAR officials, but without his lawyer present, NASCAR would not oblige him. That same day, Simpson was quoted in the Charlotte Observer, claiming he has unfairly been the focus of NASCAR's investigation. He said he felt they were trying to pin Earnhardt's death on him and insist there was never a broken seatbelt. On Friday afternoon, Simpson's stance had changed. Here's what he had to say. I really don't have any comment about anything that happened from yesterday back. Nothing. I'm, I'm concerned with the, uh, uh, with the health of the sport. It's been my life. It's a 24-7 job for me. I'm currently working with NASCAR on some new things, and um, I think we just have to go forward here, put all this stuff behind us, whatever we're talking about here. Also on Friday, NASCAR held a special driver's meeting to update the investigation. Uh, I guess over the history, they've had a way of keeping things quiet, and probably for the first time, we were briefed on what's going on. So bringing us all together like we did this morning uh, helped confirm a lot of things for me, and, uh, and it was basically what, what I had been told the whole time, and I feel very confident about that. They're going to make and make their decision based on what they know, and what they know is always correct. I mean, if we got a beef with NASCAR, they're always going to win that conversation. And if there's anything that they know, it's that he was perfectly fine in that car, and it was a malfunction of the belt. NASCAR President Mike Helton said the week of headlines prompted the meeting with drivers and owners here in Richmond. Helton sat down with me before tonight's race, and I asked him, among other things, to respond to the comments made by Bill Simpson and emergency worker Tommy Probst. We're not going to play out speculations or opinions through the media until we have facts, and enough facts to come to the best conclusions possible. In addition to that, Teresa Earnhardt has her own challenges that continue in Florida with, with the media that are, that are trying to, to do things that she doesn't want them to be able to do, and we support her on that. And, and what we might say publicly has bearings on those. Uh, there is the perception that there is a, uh, a cover-up or some type of cover-up going on by NASCAR in this investigation. Is there any? Absolutely not. Uh, and that was one of the strongest statements we wanted to make to the core of the business the last couple of days uh, was that, that there is no such thing. Uh, we know that there was a belt that was separated at the end of that accident on February 18th. And we have said what we're trying to do to find answers. Absolutely no uh, part of this organization in its 53-year history, and I've been involved with it for 20-some, has any element to it that needs to cover up or disguise or hide or misdirect or try to manipulate. And you will talk to the emergency workers who are on the scene or NASCAR will in their investigation. The, the investigation has a great deal uh, of elements attached to it that, that will be very thorough. Uh, but the facts are the facts and we'll show the facts and we'll prove the facts uh, as we go forward. Do you think that when this investigation is completed in August that the sport will be safer? I think the sport gets safer every day. Uh, in the meantime, through several processes and, and projects that are going on in addition to the Dale Earnhardt investigation, uh, we find out more every day. And we pass that knowledge on in the garage area weekly and routinely. Uh, but I think that this has brought together the, the, the incredible talent that exists in the garage uh, in a, a more focused effort that, that good will come out of. All right, gentlemen, so the drivers along the way here wanted more information, and now it seems like they're, they're getting that. But, but Darrell, my thought to you is what would NASCAR be covering up or, or hiding in this? Well, anything? we get conflicting reports. You know, you read uh, that uh, all this stuff is going on, and it's all going and we got our experts. I do know that Dr. Myers, the doctor from uh, down at uh, Duke, I, I believe what he, his report where he said that Dale died from a basal skull injury, so I know that's a fact. He's an expert. He's an outside source. I like experts. I like expert opinions. I like to know what's going on. It's just like sitting in the back of an airplane, and you're on the runway, and they won't tell you why we're not taking off. 
Are we not taking off because of mechanical problems, runway? What's the problem? I want to know. I want to know. And uh, I think that's where everybody is. And then this cat comes forward and says, you know, the belt wasn't broken and I tried to t pull it apart. I believe you got to pull in everybody. Instead of down downplaying this fella, I'd say, man, we're glad you came forward and told us this. We got some more information. Information is what we're looking for. And you got to bring people up to speed every day and tell them what's going on or else they're always going to be suspicious. Jeff, are you convinced that NASCAR is conducting the investigation the right way? <laughs> I tell you right now, you're asking me. I'm not an expert, and I'll be the first one to say that. I have my concerns about some of the things that have come out, but I do believe that Mike Helton and his organization, NASCAR, are going to get to the bottom of it. They're going to find out what the correct answers are. They're going to go through due process, and a lot of times we're frustrated because we want the answers now. We're no different than anybody else. We want the answer now. It takes time. I understand that. I just hope that we can get there the sooner the better so we can lay it all to rest because we need to race. We need to put all this behind us and go forward. Yeah, in fairness, we might get to the end in, in August, uh, Darrell, and, they, and, they, and not everything is conclusive in the investigation. There might st still be questions that are unanswered. You've got to go with what you know. You know you've got to mount the seat belts right or they can break. You know that uh, you need to have some sort of head and neck support system or you're going to have Absolutely. a basal skull injury. These are things we know. These are things that we've got to fix. Safety in the garage, how the belts are mounted, these devices to, to save the guys hurting their necks, these are all things we know. Those are facts. Today. Those yeah. are things that should be done now. And, and there is dialogue with the drivers and, and NASCAR, and that's positive. All right, we inch closer to the start of a tonight's race. So coming up after this break, you'll hear who our experts believe will win the Pontiac Excitement 400. We're excited to be bringing you the race here on FX. And welcome back to Richmond. Tony Stewart, who got his first career Winston Cup victory here back in 1999, expected to announce on Monday that he's going to try the double dip again, running in the Indy 500 and the Coca-Cola 600 in the same day. And you can see the back half of his marathon, May 27th, on Fox Sports. Short track king Rusty Wallace enters Richmond looking for his second straight win. MBNA congratulating Rusty, his last week's winner, and uh, Jeffy starts second tonight. Is he the car to beat? I, I think he definitely is one of the cars to beat. Mr. Richmond, he's always tough on the short track. All right, six wins, six career wins at this track, uh, the most of any active driver, and Rusty in good position as Fords are on the front row. All right, unfortunately, Jeff, you and your little racing buddies didn't pick Rusty last week. In fact, uh, Darrell looking for his first win of the year. As we look at the standings, and look at these reactions. Larry McReynolds, uh, who has three wins in Richmond as a crew chief, uh, joining us now from the booth upstairs. Uh, who is your pick to win tonight? Larry? Well, Chris, uh, I, I picked him at Texas a few weeks ago when his motor let me down, but he was good and happy hour. In fact, they quit early. They were so happy. So I'm going to go with that 28 car, Texaco Havlin, Ricky Rudd. Daryl, who are well, you picking no, this no, week? No, no, And I feel sorry for you, buddy. You know, they're always picking on you. <laughs> Look, you just don't... I don't want any sympathy from you. Just pick your man. Look, here's the man tonight. Come over here. Jimmy Spencer. No way. Jimmy be Spencer. Back to back. That was last Watch night. It. That was last Jimmy night. Jimmy Spencer. Hey, Tony Lee, Stewart. Tony Stewart. Oh, now that's I'm staying why you're with at the him. bottom. Hey, look. I'm not scared. That's why you're at the I'm bottom. I'm not scared. Tony Stewart's the man. Yeah, I want to see that picture. You're, you look like a third of the Brady Bunch <laughs> Jimmy with all Spencer. that. I hate being below these guys. Stay tuned for the Pontiac Excitement Mr. 400. Excitement. Live from Pontiac Richmond. Excitement. Okay. Here's our race odyssey. Uh, odyssey. Hang around. Richmond, Virginia is the place to be. Stock car racing is the life for me. This week, Richmond got a special glow. Key Man I just give that old pit row. At the track is where I'd rather be. I just love what you get to see. I adore an in-car camera view. Darling, I love you, but I'm rooting for car two. Da -da 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 -da. The chores. Da -da 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 -da. The race. Da -da 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 -da. First place. You are my wife. Goodbye, city life. Richmond, Virginia, we are there. FX part of the nation's fastest family of networks brings you to Richmond, Virginia where a sellout crowd awaits NASCAR Winston Cup racing. It's short track Saturday night. The action is fast and furious out on the midway with these radio control cars much as it will be on the three quarter mile inside the speedway gates in just a matter of minutes. It's the Pontiac Excitement 400. 
from the three-quarter mile Richmond International Raceway. It's been 90 degrees here all weekend long, but a front has moved through, easing the temperature to 78, but there are thunderstorms in the general area. Hopefully they won't be a factor this evening. Welcome to Richmond, everybody. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds and three-time Winston Cup champ, Daryl Waltrip. And Daryl, I, I can see your hands turning like they're on that steering wheel because we're going short track Saturday night. Man, it's Saturday night and the lights are on and they're getting ready to let the rough side drag. But you know what? It's watching the Kentucky Derby. You know what they were talking about? Horsepower, well, track conditions, what position they were starting in. Larry, what are they talking about out here tonight at our racetrack? Well, we're talking about track conditions. This track was reconfigured to the three-quarter mile in September of 1988. It has not seen any pavement since 1988. Same paved job that was done when it was originally reconfigured, but they put sealer on it every I every sealer. year. Sealer protects, preserves the, the asphalt. Till they run some of that sealer off, it's going to be hard for these guys to do side-by-side -side racing, but when they do get that second groove NDW, then we're going to see a little side rubbing. Bite. We're going to see some side bite, baby. It was an action-filled night last night when Jimmy Spencer won the Bush Series race. Tonight, we expect more of the same. Let's go trackside for opening ceremonies. By Eddie Robinson, the NASCAR Bush Series chaplain, motor racing outreach, and moment of silence in remembrance of Dale Earnhardt. Please join me as we observe a moment of silence for our fallen hero, Dale Earnhardt. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for wonderful heroes like Dale Earnhardt. We thank you for what he meant to us and taught us about life. Lord, we thank you for this event tonight. And we pray that as uh, we just go about this event, that we could honor you and we remember the greatest hero ever, and that's your son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for him. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, playing the national anthem is Al Larson, the NASCAR Communications Manager for Pontiac Racing. He's a saxophonist from Hampton, Iowa. season Saturday night under the lights I guess that's how just about everybody in racing started their career and it's great to get back to it oh man it brings back so many great memories uh, Nashville Huntsville Birmingham Hickory Concord you know any racetrack little short track in the country let's have a look at the Castrol starting grid 
for tonight's race. Mark Martin has his 41st career pole, and Rusty Wallace is a six-time Richmond winner on the front row. Ricky Rudd will try to end an 84 race winless streak. Rudd does, ha does have one Richmond victory in his racing resume, but it took place all the way back in 1984 when Ronald Reagan was in the White House. He is 33 races ago here in Richmond that he last won the victory lane, so tonight Rudd looks in more than one drought. And my man, uh, my man Jimmy Spencer, my pick for tonight, and I hope he doesn't forget what he did last night. Maybe he can do it again tonight, and there's Jeff. It is a two-time winner here. Row four, Tony Stewart. He scored his first career win here in September of 1999. Bobby Labonte looking for his first Richmond and his first 2000 win, and Ward Burton back after that hard crash. Outside row six, Michael Waltrip still looking for his first top ten finish since winning the Daytona 500 three months ago. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the defending champion of this race, and the guy is excitement. Last year in this event, he survived a pit road excursion with Tony Stewart to go on and win. Last week in California, he started 38th, finished third. Tonight, he starts 14th. Kyle Petty got his first career victory right here in Richmond in 1986. And Jeff Burton, he needs to do what he did here in 1998. That's win this thing, and Brett Bodine right there with him. Two years ago on this track, Dale Jarrett won the May race, grabbed the points lead, and never looked back. And some are comparing this to that championship season. Although his points lead is in jeopardy right now after a rough outing in Montana. Now, he never qualifies well here, true to form. He's starting 20th, although the 88 team says they stumbled upon something during happy hour, and they don't plan on being in the back of the pack for long. Rick Mass, the veteran from Virginia, he won a Bush Grand National race here in 1990. Robert Presley, 10th last week in California, and Mike Skinner. If a driver ever needed a great run, it's Penny Wallace. He's been racing all season without a sponsor. In fact, they almost didn't come to Richmond at the last second. They got an insurance company to step up, but it's only a one-race deal. Crew Chief Barry Dawson said tonight is a pivotal night. It's a make-or-break night. This could be their last race unless they have a great run. Jason Leffler, the fastest rookie in the field, is 18th. Terry Labonte, three-time Richmond winner, makes his 46th career start here. And Kurt Busch, fine young driver, and uh, Kevin Harvick there who won Atlanta. Mike Wallace, two top tens this year. Andy Houston makes his first cup start at Richmond. Jeremy Mayfield and uh, the Bristol winner, the other short track, is uh, right there beside him, Elliott Seven. Dave Blaney's run strong, has two top ten finishes this season. John Andretti, he'll be in a backup car after crashing and qualifying yesterday. Casey Atwood made his first career Winston Cup start here in September of last year. And Todd Bodine, whose best finish this season is fifth at Las Vegas. Three drivers had to go home. Virginian Hermie Sadler crashed on his second lap of qualifying. Buckshot Jones and Hutt Strickland in Richmond native Junie Dunleavy's car did not make the field. 400 laps tonight. They'll travel 300 miles. Posted awards, including postseason awards, total $3.2 million. And the pit window? Never say never, but normally it's not a strategy here. But again, DW, I'll never say never after the last couple of weeks. No, that's true. You know, these cars, there haven't been any cars on the racetrack all day today. So the car's getting ready to take the green flag here uh, with one more lap uh, to warm everything up. It'll be the first time they've been out today. A firestorm of flash bulbs. What, what a great sight. Oh, it is. It's just, there's nothing like short track Saturday night racing. It's the backbone of our sport. It's what makes our sport so popular. There's probably not only, a, a, not a driver down there, but probably not a crew member that had experience racing on the short tracks weekly on Saturday night. Bumping and grinding, bumping and grinding. We're going to have a few in-cars to show you tonight. Man, make you dizzy, won't it? Eight of them. And look at that on the lower left corner of your screen, Kenny Wallace. We have a steering column cam, and uh, we also have a foot cam on Kenny. And there he is, ready to go to work. And I mean, it will be work here tonight. Yeah, you work everything. You, you know, short track racing is very physical. This is a very demanding racetrack because of the D-shaped front straightaway here. Puts a lot of pressure on the driver's neck. Watch this. This track here, it used to be a half mile. That's when you used to go right down through there. That's pit road now. What they did is extended this baby out here like this and made it into a three-quarter mile, but it's got a lot of speed down this front straightaway. 
Okay, DW, air pressure's down. Coming to the green. Go, 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 go. Mark Martin, the advantage off turn two. Man, Ricky Rudd tried to get under Rusty Wallace, but uh, she broke loose just a little bit with him, and he couldn't quite make the pass. And Rusty wanting to get to the bottom of that racetrack as he does right here in turn one and two. Well, that's what Ricky was trying to do, keep him up on that outside. He knew he could get by him that way, but uh, Rusty accelerated up off turn four. Steve Park position. outside of Spencer looking for a spot in the low lane. He's not going to get one and will stand silent on lap three to honor the memory of Dale Earnhardt. Ricky Rudd in that 28 Texaco Helen bar. He wants to fall and take the position away from Mark Martin. Martin's got to get back in line. Yeah, he lost momentum off turn two, and it's going to open the door for a whole bunch of people to go back. In the first seven races this year, Rusty Wallace didn't lead a lap, but in the last four, he's led them all and has a win. Guys are trying to make that outside. Park is stuck up on the outside, and guys are going to work that outside line as quickly as they can. You got to be able to get out there and run if you're going to pass anybody. And I just believe within a few hundred laps, we'll we'll see that outside line come in. We'll see some side by side. Always do. It just takes a little time. That Sealer's uh, got a 250 laps last night on it. After about 200 laps tonight, it down low will be worn off, and they'll be looking trouble down the front straightaway. Brett Bodine spins. There's more contact. Caution is out. Man, I don't. Brett Bodine got together, I believe, with Kyle Petty. I can tell you one thing. Everybody did a miraculous job of working their way through that mess. And they'll have to sort out the scoring on the run to the caution flag here. John Andretti just right here. John Andretti just ran up there and knocked the fire out of Ron Hornaday, so Ron Hornaday had something to do with that little seal right here. John is not happy with Hornaday. Just come around there and knock the fire out of him. Andretti's got it on both sides of the nose, and that is a backup car. Andretti destroyed his primary car in qualifying. Oof. Yeah, they've got to get pit road. They've got a left front tire rubbing. A lot of damage to that front end. 77 is on pit road. Let's see what happened as they stacked up heading for turn one. That's Bodine around after contact with Kyle. Oof. Kyle Petty in the 45 car. He spun right down into Presley. Forced Presley into that inside retaining wall on the inside going into turn one. Now there's Hornaday by himself at that point. If you watch as you go down into turn one, the 14 car runs in the back of John Andretti going into turn one right there, oh, there it in is. the wall. Yep. That's what all it was about, Mike. From Michael Walter for the Napa Cam. Ooh. Looks like Kyle may have misjudged uh, Brett Bodine and clipped him from Kenny Wallace. Look at Mike Skinner, the 31 car, locking those brakes up. He barely caught the inside wall with his car. And Rick Mass just snuck through. Kyle's car, none the worse for wear, but his teammate John Andretti is going to spend a while on pit road. You're watching NASCAR on FX. Welcome back to Richmond. We've just restarted one lap ago, and Rusty Wallace takes off with the lead because second place Ricky Rudd had to busy himself with Jimmy Spencer, and Spencer got passed going into turn three for second place. Well, we watched Spencer last night in his Bush car, and he dominated that Bush race, and I believe he's got the same kind of hot rod tonight. Ward Burton back with Johnny Benson at 11th place. Sterling Marlin coming up inside of Burton. 
Yeah, I talked to Tommy Bowen last night and uh, his crew chief, Ward's crew chief, and they uh, got a good qualifying run in, but they was not very pleased with their race car and happy hour in the final practice yesterday. He just continues to lose position. Yeah, Dale Hart back, Jr. Yeah. goes by him there in the eight car. And a lot of that you got to, I do as a driver, got to wonder just how comfortable he is in that race car. Uh, this, when you're injured, uh, you, it's such a distraction, particularly on a track like this. It's so physically demanding. And Darrell, you've been on that end. I've been on that pit box on the other end where you've got an injured driver in that race car, and you spend your whole weekend just trying to get him comfortable. Yeah, and you keep watching that scoreboard, yeah. hoping the laps is going to wind down, and certainly not another accident happens. Wallace with about a half second lead. Redford Ein's car has gone behind the wall for repairs. Jeannie? Oh, and Mike, they're going to be back here for a while. A lot of damage, especially to the rear end. They have to replace the sway bar, and they're just trying to find where other damage might be. The front fender obviously bent in. They will have to take the hood off, as you can see. They're trying to see what else is going on there. The crew chief, Mike Hellman, says, uh, we got a lot of work to do. We're going to be working here for a stretch to try to get them back out there, but they think they can. Overflow on Jerry Nadu. This is also a backup car as he had a crash in practice and then spun in qualifying. Yeah, he's coming to pit road, dude. He's got a big problem. There's enough water there that uh, I would be a little concerned about that, but of course water evaporates very quickly on these hot on this hot track with the cars running over. So it shouldn't cause anybody a major problem. And Daryl, he don't look like he has any front end damage that would have caused blockage on the radiator. This early in the race, he must have a cracked cylinder yeah, head that, or something. I think that's mechanical. Spencer not allowing Wallace to increase that lead. It's pretty stable, but no, he's getting away. Down. Spencer's closing down on him some. Two of them are getting away from Ricky Rudd and the rest of the pack. Jimmy Spencer last night, that Bush Grand National race, just wore the field out. I talked to Donnie Wingo, used a lot of the setup. He said, Larry, these two race cars, the Winston Cup car here tonight, the car from last night that Jimmy won with, set up very similar. And we're seeing that more and more, Daryl, especially with the horsepower being real close to the same. Man, look at that brake rotor. That's about 1,300 degrees. Now, if we were running in the day, this is another one of those things we couldn't see if we were running in the day, but here at night, you can see that so clearly. It glows all the way around the racetrack, but see how the glow goes down here on the straightaway? Now, watch as he goes off into turn one. Boy, because it's real order. bright. And those things will take that. They, they, they'll uh, withstand that kind of heat. The, press, the pads are so hard. The inside. So big, look at the inside. It really there. heats up that rotor. Calling the 12 on the inside, Jeremy Mayfield has really moved up from his 35th starting spot. The Mayfield now challenging at 25th, so that's a 10 gain for Jeremy. Most drivers will break with their left foot, but uh, Junior Johnson always made me break with the my inside. right foot on the short track so that I keep my foot off of that brake pedal. Have it on the gas, the brake, but don't have it on both at the same time. Here comes Kurt Busch to the inside of Wallace. Matter of fact, Junior Still put a piece inside. of plywood between my pedals one time at Martinsville. I said, I can't drive without my left foot. Showed up the next day, had a piece of plywood between the two pedals. Said, drive that. Dropping back is Kevin LePage in the Morgan McClure Chevy number four. And there was contact between Wallace and Bush. That's that's uh, typical short track contact. Yeah, why should I say uh, I'm surprised? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's going to happen a lot. That's kind of how you let the guy that, that in front of you know that I want by. Here's another look at it. Coming off the corner, he gets a left wheel down on the apron, which will shove the car up just a little bit. No harm, no foul. Good short track racing. Both guys continue on. Seems they'll make those wheel openings of sheet metal around the tire just as big as possible, for instance, just like that. That's the whole deal. Don't let the fender or quarter panels get in and start rubbing the tires. And one thing you'll notice, Mike, and Larry, and Larry knows this, the better handling cars, the cars that run up near the front, you won't see their brake rotors glowing. Ah, they're A not good handling near cars. much brake getting in the corner or in the center of the corner trying to make that car turn. Cars that aren't handling good will usually be the cars with the brakes all glowing on them. Things have stabilized among the front two. Wallace and Spencer are still six tenths of a second apart. But Ricky Rudd in third, now two seconds back. Mark Barton, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, Steve Park. Jerry Nadu joins Brett Bodine behind the wall. Jeannie? Well, Mike, it has been hot in Richmond this week. 
weekend, but this is ridiculous. The water temperature shot up to 300 degrees when they realized the water pump belt was broken. So that's what they're trying to fix. As a result, he had no power steering. So Jerry Nadeau still sitting in his car behind the wheel. The net is up. Every intention of getting this changed and getting back out to work. Steve? Ricky Run. His car is handling well going into the corners, but he is tight from the center off. Can't get it to turn once he gets in the middle of the corner. That's kind of typical Richmond's. That's what you fight all night long here. You'll be a little loose in, a little tight off, won't cut through the center. But now is when the driver needs to be telling the crew chief all these things so that you can start thinking about what to do to the car when the car comes in the pit. And you've got to be able to adjust this car all night long. How about Ricky Craven? Started 13th. He's up fighting Bill Elliott for 8th place. And he's doing it without his regular crew chief, Mike Bean. Mike Bean fined $5,000 on a two-race suspension here this week at Richmond and in two weeks at the Winston at Lowe's Motor Speedway because of a seat belt that didn't have the date. The date had been cut off, so he's actually working without his crew chief. Roy McCall, who actually was Scott Pruitt's crew chief in this race car last year, he's the acting crew chief. Mike, one of the hardest things to do is drive the car in these close quarters like this with cars all around you, have a good track presence and be able to communicate to your crew what the car is doing. Because most of the time you just want to scream at everybody and say, leave me alone, I'm doing all I can do. As Rusty Wallace comes to the line, he has now led a total of 2,500 laps in Richmond. 31 complete, Wallace still out front of Jimmy Spencer by about six tenths of a second. In Jimmy Spencer's pit. That's the uh, gasculator or gonculator or something program there. <laughs> it figures it out. It does. It keeps up with the amount of laps on their tires, how many caution laps they run, how many rain flag runs. No Spencer, that 26 car, them old rotors starting to glow on his car, DW. Well, he's, he was up there after. He wants to get around Rusty. That's what he'd like. He'd like to be leading this race. He might be overdriving or just a tad right now. Jeff Gordon has gotten past Tony Stewart. That's for fifth place. Bill Elliott continues to drop a couple of spots here as Bobby Labonte moves up. That uh, Wasn't there a horse numbered 18 did pretty well today? Yeah, he did. He won the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> I wish I knew how to say his name. But number 18 did win today. Bobby Labonte started ninth. Another new race car for Bobby this week. They had a brand new one at Fontana last week. Brought another one here this week at <laughs> Richmond. Well, the way their old ones were doing, maybe there's a good reason Time for that. Time to bring some <laughs> yeah, new ones right. out. Let's get an update on the uh, Ralph's number 11. Here's Jeannie. Yeah, Brett Bozine not about to throw in the towel just yet, but he will drop the net and talk with us. Brett, what happened? Well, we, we had got down to the inside lane, and we'd made a move underneath Kyle Betty, and uh, the car was working really good on the bottom. And I think what happened was I got by him on the front straightaway, but he was trying to get back in behind me to protect his position. I think he just must have misjudged it and uh, caught me in the right rear, and it turned me towards the outside wall, and I, I kept it off the wall, but unfortunately, I was in the middle of the racetrack, and, you know, the rest of the guys just had nowhere to go. It's just a real shame. We had such a good car all weekend here, and uh, felt like we were going to have a good run here tonight, but, you know, we'll just get this uh, Ralph's uh, Red Cell Taurus ready for uh, Charlotte. Hopefully, have a good run down there. We're cut out for them, guys. They had problems with the rear suspension, and then they took off the hood and got underneath that left front tire, and they have more trouble. This will take some time, Mike Joy. And they'll try to get Bonai back out there. That uh, Labonte and Elliott battle has finally been decided in favor of Labonte, but they went five laps side by side. Well, if you get up on the outside and uh, if the guy on the inside will just cut you a little bit of slack, you can get on by. And uh, that's really what you need to do this early in the race. Don't need to race right now each other side by side. Let the guy go and follow him and maybe you can see what he's doing. It'll help both of you. Wallace has picked up another tenth of a second on Jimmy Spencer. It's almost a full second now from first to second place. Yeah, Jimmy's falling off the pace of Rusty just a teeny bit. I think Jimmy realized he was, he may have been driving his car a little too hard. Larry, we noticed a little glow in his front rotors and he looks a little loose off turn four now. There's John Andretti to the inside and more smoke from the left front of his car. 
And there's Rusty, there's our leader. Typical short track race, and we've been on a pretty good long green run here, and uh, he's going to have all this lap traffic to contend with here in just a few short laps. And, of course, like always, he's putting a bunch of people laps down. You get somebody really fast up near the front, and, man, when you start restart like these guys did at the rear of the field, they're in jeopardy of going to lap down real early in this race. There's smoke from Jeremy Mayfield, and uh, he is getting the black flag from NASCAR for that. Well, that's unfortunate because he was running really well. He moved up a lot. It oh. started 35th and moved up to 23rd. So he here he's going around Mike Skinner in the 31 car underneath him, but he's going to have to come to pit road. Now, Larry, what do you, is out. when they do that to you, what are you telling the inspector down there? I'm down there pleading every <laughs> case I can plead. I'm, I'm hoping the whole time I'm talking to him, discussing it with him, that a caution may get come out. <laughs> and the, how about that rubber on the, on the head? It's just rubber on that's, the header, right? That's why the kids yeah. do it. Yeah. Be careful because he is putting something down up there. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon has caught... Jimmy Spencer. Now Spencer has backed up to fourth place. Wallace, your leader, Rudd in second, Martin third. Yeah, Jimmy's car's gotten a little loose. And uh, what he's having to do now is kind of pedal that baby just a tad and cause him to back up some. Jeremy Mayfield in the 12 car, he did bring it to pit road and they're going to look underneath and they're going to change tires while they're there, try to figure out what's leaking on that car. But you know, that, that's, Ooh, that's something, excuse me, sparks from underneath the right rear of Spencer's car. Saw a little bit of smoke too, I believe. Uh, he's, he's got some kind of problem. He's gotten real loose and he's falling back. I'm not sure exactly what his problem I saw is. It, I saw it going into the corner. Let's see. Not that time. Hmm. Maybe going into turn one here. 85. Just a little, a little bit. bit. Sparks, yeah. yeah. Well, he could be having, you know, he could have a soft right rear. Could be his problem. See how loose he, he is, is off the corner? Loose. Can't touch that throttle right now. So he may have to make an unscheduled stop here before long. Rusty Wallace dealing with race traffic. Stacy Compton right there. And there's Ricky Rudd, who is one second back of the Miller Lite number two. And see how Compton can roll in on the outside of Rusty? Rusty's got to go a little slower through the center of the corner, which will allow the outside car to catch right up along the side of him, but he can't accelerate off the corner. And the further we go into the night, that outside groove, it'll get better and better. They'll be able to carry more and more momentum. And you'll finally just sail right by that guy and take his line away coming off the corner. Bright lights, full house, and 52 laps complete in the Pontiac Excitement 400. Fifty-eight laps complete at Richmond. Rusty Wallace leads Ricky Rudd by one second. Mark Martin's another half second back. Back in the pits, Jeremy Mayfield. Car continuing to smoke, and NASCAR wants that repaired if they're going to let him back out on the racetrack. NASCAR official right there. He's looking underneath there. They're not going to let him go back out until they prove to him what's leaking. They got what's a little oil leak under there somewhere, and they got to find it. And of course, they're working in the dark. You know, at night, it's a little harder to find than it would be in the daytime. There's your leader, Wallace, moving up on Joe Nemechek, who started deep in the field. Now, Rusty's rotors are growing, blowing a little bit that time through there, too. Well, he's been working his traffic now, having to work everything, especially those brakes a little harder. And folks, we don't, you know, we don't want to wear you out about the brake rotors, but there's so many in, that indicate so many things to us. How the car is handling, uh, how the driver is performing in the car, so many things. Who has gained the most spots in the first 50 laps? Andy Houston started 34th in his first Winston Cup appearance here. He's gained 19 positions. Kevin Harvick and Casey Atwood have also been big movers. I'm surprised to see that 29 car somewhere near the front for this Nitro with. I always think about Dale here. He didn't ever, he'd always qualify really badly, but uh, man, he would be a, something to deal with in the race. Finished second here to Jeff Gordon. Now, Presley, you see the damage from that uh, lap six incident with Brett Bodine and Kyle Petty. He is lapped down in the 77. Rusty Wallace closing up. Now Jimmy Spencer ran at the front, but he's fallen back to sixth place. Dick Bergeron's in his pit. Well, we talked about how important brakes are here at Richmond and how much the drivers use them. Brakes are Jimmy Spencer's problems. He is dropping back a little bit, giving those brakes a chance to cool off before he makes another run at it. Come on. 
in the final practice session where Polson or Mark Martin was second quick. He wanted to wait until after the Bush Series race on Friday night to make one final change. Whether to make a sway bar adjustment change, and they did. They went to a smaller bar. Right now, though, Mark is complaining about his car being very, very tight. They're talking about several different scenarios to make on this car, changes to make on their pit stop. Right now, he's talking about air pressure in the right rear. Mark led the first three laps. He's the only driver to lead every race this season. And, Darrell, i got to believe what Mark Jimmy Finney was anticipating there is the racetrack was going to be tighter. So they went to that smaller front anti-roll bar in the front. That will help the car turn through the middle. Now, one thing, though, I was always a little fearful about a smaller sway bar here is it would make the car looser off the corner. Yeah. Did you see the, <laughs> that 31 car just about got, it got a little loose off the corner? I can tell you that got a little help though. Well, all these fellas are scrambling because Rusty this. Wallace is coming right behind them. Yeah, and uh, Terry Labonte is in a hurry and he says, excuse me, uh, excuse me, pardon me, sir, but I got to get going. Well, you see Rusty Wallace in the two car, the blue car there beside Horner Day, he's coming. Terry Labonte's got to go. All these guys has got to go. Trying to keep from getting a lap down as Wallace moves underneath Jason Leffler. And that's allowed Ricky Rudd to close right in on the back bumper of the leader. Mark Martin right there behind Ricky. So we got a good race here for the first two or three spots. This is 28th, 29th, 30th position. He's trying to put a lap down here. And we already, we're just at lap 67. That happens so many times here. And again, you know, these guys restarted over on the back straightaway when they had the single file restart early in the race. It puts them in jeopardy going to lap down real early. That's right. When they restarted. After the lap six crash, the last car in line was already 11 seconds behind the leader. Which is over a half a lap. Right. They're going around here in about 22, 23 seconds. That's a half a lap when the green flag came out. Brett Bodine, battered, but back in the race. Oh, Ralph turned into rough. <laughs> Mike Wallace just ahead of his older brother, Rusty, who is the race leader. And the number two, Ricky Rudd looking on the outside. And Ricky's trying to get that right through the center of the corner. If you protect that bottom, uh, you got to slow down and stay on the bottom. And sometimes you can roll through the center real free up high and go right by a guy. This is Rudd's home racetrack. He's always done well here, whether this was a half or a three-quarter mile. But he's gone 16 races here now without leading finished fourth here last year. But this race car they brought here, this is a car that's been so good to this race team. They've done everything with it, but win a race. They was leading Phoenix. They was leading Homestead last year. Both races, a lap car got them. There he is just in front of Mark Martin, and you see how Martin's progression has been coming back up toward the front. And he uh, won a race here with his eyes taped open. Had Ricky did. Ricky Rudd did. 1984. Had a serious crash. At Daytona in the Bush Clash. Finished seventh a week later in the 500. And then came here to Richmond one week later and won in one of the gutsiest couple of week comeback in the history of any sport. You got it. 72 laps complete. And Richmond, Rusty Wallace leads by now just a quarter of a second. FX, welcome you back. Saturday Night Racing next Saturday. It's in the afternoon, the Bush Series on FX, 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific. As we enjoy the Pontiac Excitement 400 this evening from Richmond, Virginia. And since lap four, Rusty Wallace, the king of the short track, has led this race. And uh, with six wins here, Jeff, the most among active drivers. Well, as we were talking about earlier this evening, you can't allow Robin Pemberton and this group get some momentum going their way. They won a race last week. They come to another racetrack they're very strong on, and Rusty's out front. He loves this racetrack. He loves racing at night. Got to watch out, guys. He couldn't run away with this thing and really mess the show up. Now, we've only gone to 80 laps here with just the one caution. Uh, is is uh, that uh, a little bit surprising to you? No, not unusual here at Richmond. A lot of times the guys will get started and things get kind of strung out. But as these leaders start catching up with the back markers, these guys will start getting back up on the wheel. And that's when they're going to start beating and banging. And you got to watch out for possible wrecks. Then guys get to come in, work on their cars. And the race has a tendency to have a, uh, like a mid-point change. And all of a sudden, you got five or six cars for fighting for the lead. And it can get very interesting and very good here at Richmond. I guarantee you it's going to be wonderful before the end of the race. And it's all four. Rusty Wallace followed by Ricky Rudd and Mark Martin at this point. Mike? Thanks, Chris. Rusty Wallace, your leader. Ricky Rudd, you see 
six tenths of a second back from our Fox tracks. Jeremy Mayfield has gone to the garage, and Mike Skinner has made a pit stop. Only 78 laps into this green flag run, Larry. But he had went a lap down. Now, that's a gamble on a short track, because that caution, it could come out any second. But I think they felt like their car was so bad, already had went a lap down. Let's get some fresh tires. We'll make up some ground. Maybe this thing will cycle through, and we'll make up some of this ground that we lost. Yeah, he's just gambling that he can get in and do what he has to do, and then maybe a caution will fall just right for him to get back in the race. But otherwise, he's in trouble. The fourth place car is Tony Stewart. He is 2.9 seconds off the lead. Matt? Mike, Tony Stewart has climbed three positions to fourth. Right now, he's complaining about he needs to add forward fight when they pit. That's his main concern at the moment. Right now, he's just being very patient, knowing we've got over 300 laps still left to run in this 400-lap event. You know, lack of forward bite, a lot of times that's a result of the car turning really good through the middle, but when he puts his foot on the throttle to come off the corner, the rear tires are not hooking up to the racetrack. He needs them to hook up better when he nails that throttle. Yeah, and Spencer's in the pit here, and he's coming a little early, too. I think he's got problems. Flat tire, we're told. Dick Bergman? You got it, Mike. It is a flat right front tire. Jimmy Spencer just burst out of the radio and said flat left front, and all of his crew jumped to the wall. They are ready to service that race car as soon as it gets here. Terry Spall is going to change the front. Bill Kerwood from Pennsylvania, six years on this crew. He's doing the rear tires. Wayne Jenks, long time the Jack Van with his team. He's running around the car right now to pick up the left side. It's a four-tire change under green while everybody is out here racing. Spencer losing left. Four tire change. About 17.4 seconds. Good stop, but it's going to cost him on this racetrack at least a lap, maybe two by the time he gets back up to speed. Yeah, and, and you just sit there and hope as a team and a driver that uh, the caution will not come out now. Kenny Schrader is stopped, and so has Rick Mast. Rusty Wallace mowing him down. Ricky Rudd staying within eight tenths of a second. Another young gun that's been on the move is Casey Atwood. He's up to 17th after starting in the next to last row. And, and Mike, it's things like flat tires and accidents and things like that. They're unpredictable. You never know when you're going to get bitten by something like that. And you can have an absolutely great car and be taken right out of the race because of something like a flat tire. One addition that was made to Casey Atwood's team just this past week, Sammy Johns, who was the crew chief for Kenny Schrader last year in the beginning of this year, been walking around the garage area several weeks. They decided to part company with the 36 team a few weeks ago. They hired him this week as kind of like a lead mechanic. Yeah, when there's good people walking around, people with experience, you got to hire them and put them work somewhere. They can't stay unemployed very long. Well, one thing I was impressed with Sammy, he stayed at the racetrack. I'll just the old cliche, out of sight, out of mind. Well, Rusty Wallace, as we watch from Bobby Hamilton, are uh, continuing to. Go hanging on your bumper, a left car. Casey's got some experience here. He's run the he run the Winston Cup race here last fall, and uh, also he's run the Bush car here a number of times. So it's a good track for him. We just crossed lap 91, and what we'll see these leaders do is you, you break it straight down. You run about 110 to 115 laps on tires and fuel, but you kind of like to see it broke down to the 100, 100, 100, 100. Three, four 100 lap runs. But once one of those leaders commits to pit road, the rest of the leaders will be right with him just because of not giving up a lot of time. I like to run the race backwards. I like to, to run the race backwards in my mind as, as, a, as a driver and try to figure out where I'm going to be at the end of the day. So I can tell you, you as my crew chief, the car is doing this and the track is changing this way and this is what's going on. So every time I come in, you can make changes to my car that's going to make me better and better and better before the night's over with. Watching uh, Matt Kenseth move up. He moves away from Kyle Petty and closes up on Ricky Craven who is in 14th place. Well, these guys have been out there getting uh, 94 laps, and uh, tires have got that's the longest run anybody's had since we've been here all weekend, oh, obviously. Boy. They almost stacked right up there, Darrell, coming out of turn two. Craven didn't get a good run off the corner underneath Stacy Compton, and that whole bunch, they're almost accordion right together. Yeah, well, you take tire wear, and then the track changes that the track's going to go through with the suit and everything. These cars have been out there long enough now that, uh, that the, the cars are going to start getting a little harder to drive. 
Mike Skinner has easily caught that pack. Now, he has already been on pit road and gotten fresh tires in his Lowe's number 31. Oh, tires. They make you Superman <laughs> for a while. That's right. Kenseth takes Craven. That's for 14th place. Got Ward Burton slipping into the pits over here real slow. I'm not sure if he's got a problem or not. Now here's Spencer, and that's exactly what Spencer wants to do, is get back in front of the leader, Rusty Wallace, in case a caution should come out. He's gonna put him back in the race. Yeah, he was two laps down. He just made one of those laps back up. But when Rusty pits, then he should be back, you know, pretty much in sync. And uh, I gotta believe the guys will be pitting here before too long, probably in about the next 10 or 12 laps, wouldn't you think, Larry? Yeah, again, I, I'm gonna look at that 100 lap mark, which is only three or four laps away, and I'm gonna say they're gonna be on pit road making those adjustments and getting four fresh Goodyear tires. Rusty Wallace leads by eight tenths of a second. Good bit of slipping and sliding and a little slam banging here at Richmond on short track Saturday night. It's the Pontiac Excitement 498 laps complete here on FX. Glad to have you with us on FX for the Pontiac Excitement 400. Quarter distance complete, 104 of 400 laps. A lot of green flag pit stops. Andy Houston's been in, Ricky Craven, Johnny Benson coming in, Elliot Sadler going out. All these green flag pit stops as we've had only one caution this evening, and that way back on lap six when Kyle Petty and Brett Bodine got together. Only one car out of the race, Jeremy Mayfield. And now when you're making these stops is when you just sit there and hold your breath and hope everybody cycles through because as much as some of these guys would like to see a caution, uh, you sure don't want to have one when you've been in the pits. Back to match. Well, the former Bush Series winner, Richmond, Steve Park, comes into his pit stalls. Kevin Bonomanion holds out the pit board sign. Right now, Park was complaining his car was tight in the middle of the corner, but loose off, so they went down in air pressure in the left rear tire. making a stop and these are scheduled green flag pit stops and guess who hadn't made one yet the leader he's still out right. there circulating around and buddy you can get people in trouble if a uh, caution should fly right now tony stewart coming uh, back on the racetrack wallace rudd and martin and gordon have not stopped nor have sterling marlin bobby labonte dale jarrett jeff burton bernhardt jr and kenza we'll come a bunch of the guys in now there's gordon labonte Rusty Wallace, he has almost a one and a half second lead. He can kind of let the other second, third, fourth place car make that commitment to pit road before he has to. But I've been watching his lap times, Larry, and he hadn't he's been running the same lap time. He hadn't slowed down, so it's not a, like he needs to pit other than for fuel. Matt? Jeff Gordon already in pursuit. You can see the wedge wrench in the back window. Steve Lapart, Latart makes the turn. They've got the orange wedge wrench, which in times of pit stops, so the guy does not have to think. Orange means old trouble on the left rear a slow stop for Jeff Gordon he was making complaints about his car being loose on the turns to Steve Burns Rusty Wallace coming down pit road Matt they're going to change four tires Billy Wilburn on the front tires he also drives wing sprint cars right side tires going on a chassis adjustment one round to the left rear Rusty Wallace Rob Jones the jack man slams the jack onto the left side of the car put Dale Earnhardt Jr. into the lead, but now he makes uh, his appearance on pit road. But he did get credit for leading one lap. Right. So did Ricky Rudd. Well, theoretically, when it all cycles back around, 
Rusty Wallace will still be leading the race because he had a great pit stop and he came in with a comfortable lead. So should still be leading the race when everybody gets finished. But Daryl, I look down there and watch these pit stop times. Everybody's Stop. having great pit Man, stops. did you see that one was 13-3 on Rudd? 16-3 on Dale Earnhardt Jr. These guys are changing four tires, dumping 22 gallons of gas, 16 seconds and, and quicker. The jack man on that 28 car was incredible. He jacked the car up, caught a tire, carried a tire, let the car down. I mean, he was everywhere. And we've cycled through our pit stops for Rusty Wallace now here on lap 113. He is back leading the race. 113 laps complete. Wallace, the leader, Tony Stewart, has moved to second. He is 1.1 seconds behind Wallace. Ricky Rudd is now third. Jimmy Spencer, Mark Martin, Johnny Benson, Jeff Gordon, and Bobby Labonte. Trouble in turn two is Ricky Craven in a big cloud of smoke and a big clout to the turn two concrete. Mike Wallace will get a lap back from his brother, and so will Ron Hornaday and Casey Atwood getting a lap back from the leader. And a strong run by Ricky Craven will go for naught. Well, these second guys part. are starting to move up the racetrack, trying to get that uh, second groove to work for them. And if you tippy-toe over that line, buddy, the car will come around with you in a heartbeat. Ricky a lot of damage around. that race car. Yeah, he's moving around in there trying to get things unhooked. And let's watch Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s in-car camera to see what happened to Craven. Following him down in there, and you see... Hmm. Might have just slipped, slid away. It looked like the guy was getting loose as he, as he went down into the corner. I couldn't tell how close Dale Jr.'s bumper was to his rear bumper is the problem. <laughs> Definitely got loose getting in the corner. The grill's pushed in. See the grill right there? See how his grill's pushed in? I think he may have made a tad of contact with him getting in there. Jimmy Spencer's in, Dick. Yeah, they're still concerned about brakes, Mike. That really has been their problem all night long. Jimmy Spencer's just come on the radio and told his crew basically oh, the difference around. between last night and tonight is he has got to use a whole lot more brake getting into the corners. Last night he was virtually invincible. Almost nobody could touch him. Tonight he runs a while, brakes heat up, he's back in the pits again. That tire, by the way, importantly, was not melted. That tire had a cut in it, so it wasn't that he had so much brake temperature it melted the right front tire down. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. also stopped, as did Casey Atwood. Very few lead lap cars coming in because they just made green flag exactly. stops. Exactly. Had about 10 laps or even less on their tires. Stay out there for those track positions because we're still sitting here with about 20-something cars on the lead lap. And there's Ricky Craven walking away. Okay. We'll be right back. Wallace uh, currently our leader here as FX welcomes you back live and you get a look at the Hollywood Hotel and our home away from home and a good look at uh, what's going on here. I want to, if we can get a shot of that front rotor again, I think it was Kenny Wallace's car and how hot that, that gets actually and it's because of the kind of track and the kind of racing that goes on here. You're going down in this corner so fast when you enter turn one and down in turn three, it is just so hot and we're talking about a thousand degrees. These things will burn you if you're not careful as far as the tire change is concerned. The, other situation you got to worry about is the tire bead. It gets so hot, the bead of the tire is right over top of that rotor, and the heat coming up through that rim a lot of times can damage the bead. And what'll happen? It can get you in trouble. Now you that, see that. right? That's the rotor right there. You see the tire come off of it. Watch. There it is coming off. The new tire coming on, and it goes right back over top of that thousand degree rotor, and all that radiant heat is coming right up through into the, into the tire. So the brake heat affects not only the rotors or the brakes, it affects the tires. So keeping the driver off of it's very important. We thought it was hot today. It's uh, hot tonight. Let's go back upstairs to Mike Joy. 
Ricky Craven walked away from that turn two crash that has put us under the second caution of the evening. Rusty Wallace leading, Tony Stewart second, Ricky Rudd, Mark Martin, Johnny Benson are your front five. There are 18 go, cars Carl. on the lead lap. Okay. And they've signaled Rusty Wallace that in one lap will go back to green. And guess what? Is falling out of the sky. Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. That's not rain. <laughs> that is not rain. Tractor going out on the track right now, guys. They got a tractor going out on the track. Rusty, back off. 10-4, I'm on it, John. Roger. Well, they're still... Sorry. Yeah. Still on one to go. A little bit of sweeping going on up there. Guess they're going to drop that uh, that vehicle off the track and go. They're not going. Man, looking at the field, lights are out on the safety car, and now they come back well, on. So we're going to stay caution here. Good thing. Well, I was going to talk to Rusty, but uh, I have him on the radio here. But I think with the confusion that's going on out there, let me wait here and see if we're going to get one to go or not. Between the start and finish and say uh, probably pit 10 here, if I call him clear on that lap car, if he gets it early. Four. Now that's Robin Pemberton and Earl Barvin, the spotter, talking back and forth. Rusty, it's DW up my TV tower, bud. You're looking good tonight. Uh, awesome car like last week. Thanks a lot. It's running really good. It's handling really, really good. I'm just uh, I'm trying to drive a smooth race. I hit my marks and keep her driving straight up off the corner. It's running good. How about the track, Rusty? Has it uh, changed any from the start of the race? About the same. Better not. A little bit of the sealer's wearing off, and the track is freed up just a little bit. Uh, usually in the nighttime, it gets tighter, as you know, but as the sealer's coming off, it gets a little bit looser. But I tell you, my cars are pretty doggone good, and it's kind of eating up the track changes. That's a big 10-4. How about the weather? Are you seeing any raindrops out there? Yeah, we got a little bit of rain out here, but not much. I think if we went back green, it'd be okay. It's just real, real light sprinkles. They're just going to get turn one or two cleaned off. There's a lot of oil dry over there, and it's going to make for a real slick track. 10-4, bud. Thanks for talking to us, and uh, you are the man. Wallace has led all but six laps. A lot like last year when Rusty led 227 of the first 275 laps of this race. 130 laps complete in Richmond. How about Gordon? 132 laps complete, cleaning up the second caution of the night. This one for Ricky Craven's single car crash at turn two. Now, this is Jason Leffler's pit. They're not shaving the tire. They've sprayed, <laughs> they've, they've sprayed like a, a silicone or, or substance on there, like soap, and it's telling them that they got a leak. And you see here, they're pointing to it right there. You can see the, it's bubbling right there. It was leaking. Either the wheel had a leak or the beat of the tire had a leak. Sometimes those wheels will get a little ding in them, and the tire will not seat up against it. Dick? Uh, they Daytona 500 winner Michael Waltrip has had no fun at all tonight. He made an early pit stop for a locking right front brake just a few laps ago. He made another lengthy pit stop for that locking right front brake. The crew lost a tire in the process. NASCAR held him up for 15 seconds. Hard to say if he's got that thing fixed. Probably he did not. To Matt. Well, down here in the 20 pit of Tony Stewart, crew chief Greg Zipidelli told me they went up on the track bar one and a half rounds and made a slight air pressure adjustment. Tony needed help in the center of the corner and needed some forward bite up off the corner to Steve. Matt, when Ricky Rudd brought that number 28 car down pit road, the only thing they did was put in gas and change tires. But one other change is going to happen. Ricky Rudd said, I think I'm running better on the high side to get more grip up there. So watch that 28 move up the racetrack just a bit, Jeannie. Well, Steve, more pit stop frustrations for the 88 crew. Dale Jarrett's Jackman Vermeuse missed his spot on the left side this last pit stop. He came in eighth, went out tenth. They said it went 16 plus seconds. They are not pleased and still trying to get that pit stop up to speed. Mike? 18 cars are on the lead lap as we get set Bender up for the restart. And that, that pit crew, Dale Jarrett's pit crew, is the one that came over from the Rainbow Warriors. And, uh, you know, they've had some mistakes. They had a mistake at Darlington. They had a mistake last week in California. And uh, they made another mistake here tonight. So uh, the Rainbow Warriors are the ex-Rainbow Warriors uh, having their problems in the pits. Nonetheless, they are the Winston Cup point leaders. You ask for it, we deliver. You want to hear some pure American NASCAR horsepower? Let's crank it up for this restart.
second place battle into turn three. Stewart trying to take it from Ricky Rudd. When he moved up on the high side and looked like he really picked up a lot of speed. Stewart had a little contact with Kyle Petty there. Whoa, got a tiger by the tail. His name is Tony. Boy, the only problem there you worry about is if it got maybe cut the tire down or cut the bow stem down. Uh, that, that's the big thing about when you start rubbing tires like it with sheet metal. Wallace the leader, now Stewart second, run third. Martin, Benson, Gordon. Boy, three wide back here behind these guys. Holy cow. Steve Park is up for seventh. Bobby Labonte eighth. Dale Jarrett, Sterling Marlin, the top ten. The rest of the lead lap cars, Andy Houston, Jeff Burton, Matt Kenseth, Jimmy Spencer, Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Casey Atwood, and Ken Schrader are all on the lead lap. And if you notice, Mike, those cars are getting a little higher down here at three and four. Almost every lap now, that higher groove is really starting to come in for these guys. They're looking for more grip. You heard them talking about that. That's fresh sealer up there. They get up there and those tires will stick a lot better. Benson and Gordon uh, just made the move on Mark Martin. Down in turn one to the inside. Moves Benson up to fourth and Gordon to fifth. Kind of an oxymoron, I guess, but when it's, it's real slick up there until it comes in, and then it's like being in glue. It just comes right in, and the tires, the hot tires really start to stick to that fresh sealer. Boy, this racetrack, it's coming to Jeff Gordon in that 24 car. He runs on the high side. He pulls it right down to the bottom, getting in the corner. Here he's going to go by Johnny Benson. This is a battle for four. All the way below the yellow oh. line on turn four. Benson and Martin get together. Well, Benson was trying to close that hole there so Martin couldn't get in, but uh, that's not exactly the way to do it. Well, Benson's been good in the middle of the corner and off turn two. Really getting a good bite. These guys are up high off the two back there now. Mark Martin, he's got Johnny Benson in the 10 car trapped on the high side. Got Steve Park right behind him. If he opens that door, Steve wants to go through it with him. See, Mark tried to fall back in behind Benson, and when he did, he backed off just a teeny bit. Here comes Park. So Martin slides all the way back to seven. Jerry Nadu and Jeremy Mayfield have both made repairs and come back on the racetrack. You'll see more on FX from Charlotte in two weeks. The Winston NASCAR's all-star night comes to FX. Under the lights, sparks are flying here tonight. But he you've yeah. been part of the I'm sparks. Right there now. That I, I've never missed one. This will be the first one I've ever seen. Uh, not been involved in, and I'm, I'm looking forward to calling the race, though, because I know how exciting it is. It'll be big track Saturday night. It will be, buddy. No points, lots of money, and Special, those guys go for it. Special paint jobs. And Mark Martin repasses Steve Park. Yeah, actually what happened there, like I said, the, Mark tried to get in behind Benson, and when he did, he had to lift a little bit, and Park took the, made the pass on him, but uh, I think Mark's a little quicker. Trouble for Andy Houston, who's had a great drive in the first quarter of this race. And it's a long way back around for Houston to pit road. Well, Tony Stewart, he's all the way on the back bumper, Rusty Wallace. He's wanting to lead in this race. Tony is so much better off the corner. Matt Young, what's going on with that 20 car? Larry, Tony Stewart reporting into his crew Greg Zipidelli that his car actually feels better at the beginning of this run after those changes, that track bar adjustment, than this 20 car did at the beginning of the race. Oh, Tony Stewart needs to only lead one lap, and then he'll pick up his 1,000th lap led on a short track. Man, well, he gets this one with an asterisk because he bumped Rusty out of the way to do it. I got to believe Rusty Wallace will file that one away. That was a pretty aggressive pass there this early in the race. And he got him out of shape enough. Ricky Rudd in the 28 car, the Texaco car, he takes second place from him. Here's another look. Really got the whole left side of the car down on the apron. That was just, that's forcing the issue. Rusty had to back off the throttle. Ricky Rudd in that black car right there, he's going to take advantage of it well. But we just had talked about Tony Stewart getting off the corner so quick. <laughs> yeah. From Rusty's bumper cam. Bump, bump at the bump. You hear Rusty, he did a great job of hanging on to that thing. How much of, of this, Daryl, is born of frustration? Last year, Tony Stewart led the league in wins with six. This year, he's winless, and he's only led three races. Well, I think all that is right there is having a great race car and wanting to get in the lead and just run off and leave everybody if you can. I think that's what that's all about. Tony's a kind of guy that likes to dominate if he can. 
Ricky Craven has been released from the infield care center. Jeannie's with him. Yes, Mike Joy, that is the good news. He has been released. With the bad news, of course, the car sits here in the garage. Ricky, how are you, and what happened? Oh, I'm fine. I'm, uh, I got run into and uh, tore up my tied forward. I'm not real happy about that, but, uh, you know, that's short track race. I'm having fun. I'm not having fun right this minute, but I'm having a lot of fun this year, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll recover from this next week. Frustration, of course, in California with mechanical problems, and now guys just tell me he doesn't think the car will get back out there, but he'll wait. Had a good run going while it lasted. And let me tell you, Tony Stewart better pick up the pace because Rusty Wallace is coming with a vengeance. Not only Rusty, but Jeff Gordon has caught Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd. First time tonight, a Pontiac's been out front in the Pontiac Excitement 400 on FX. One hundred fifty-eight laps complete at Richmond International Raceway. Tony Stewart with a one-second lead on Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd. Only three top tens in ten races for Tony Stewart. But they've all come here recently, and uh, that team is just getting back in form to do what they did last year, win a lot of races. This race car was one of the first short track cars that they built for Tony Stewart. They've kind of deemed it as their Richmond Martinsville car. He won his first race, Winston Cup race here at Richmond in this car. Won Martinsville with it, sat on the pole at Martinsville. Uh, they keep talking about building the new car, but say, hey, we like this car. It works good for us. On Fox tracks, that gap is maintaining pretty constant right around one second. Stewart pulls out a little advantage down that straightaway, and Rusty tries to close it back up in the corner. And on the stopwatch right now, Stewart's about a, a tenth quicker each lap than Rusty, as long as they're in clear traffic with uh, with no lap cars to deal with. And see, this is what I was talking about getting, when you get the track slips up on you. Now, Rusty was happy with his car, but all of a sudden here comes Tony Stewart, and when Rusty had to go the speed that Tony Stewart's going, his car's not as good as it was. Every time something like that, you got to always be planning ahead about how I'm going to make my car better. From the Miller Lite cam of Rusty Wallace, looking back at Ricky Rudd and Jeff Gordon. And I believe Ricky Rudd is basically he and Jeff Gordon are kind of in the cruise mode. They got the leaders in sight. They're not really pressing anything too hard. They're not being challenged from the rear. I think they're just kind of sitting there thinking about the big picture. Next car behind them is Johnny Benson, then Steve Park, Mark Martin, and Dale Jarrett. Pretty well spaced out. And the, by the way, tonight the big picture has black and white checkers all over. That's the picture of the night. Get the bigger picture lane. The bigger <laughs> picture is uh, got a big Winston Cup trophy in front of it. Good line there, good line. We'll update you on Jeremy Mayfield. They've gotten his car back out there. They changed the transmission. Appeared that's maybe what was leaking. Changed the transmission in 40 laps. That's a pretty quick tra transmission change. I'd be curious to know if he was... I, I, I believe he was shifting gears. And I say that because I heard him in practice. And I said, that car sounded like he was changing gears. And... Uh, Maybe we can get somebody to find out for us. And, and Darrell, if they were shifting, the reason they would do that, the two straightaways, back stretch and front stretch, are distinctly different lengths. You'll turn about three or 400 more RPMs on the front stretch than the back stretch, so possibly, you know, well, they take advantage of a little lower gear. You run high gear all the way around here, but pull it back to third gear to get you down that back stretch where you'll turn less RPMs if you stayed in high gear. Yeah, you need a 529 down that little short back straightaway, 529 gear ratio. Then you need about a 514 down this front. And that's what you can do with an overdrive transmission. Take it back to sixth place here. Steve Park and Mark Martin continue to go at it. From the Pfizer cam on board Mark Martin's Jack Roush number six. And if they were shifting, Darrell, one of the downsides of that, when you're shifting, you're building a lot more a lot heat, heat in the transmission. Yeah, that's could have been the problem. I don't know if anybody's ever tried that here, but I never knew anybody had ever tried it at Pocono either until somebody won a race doing that. The Elliott and Atwood Dodges battling there with Kurt Busch. Those two Dodges are on the lead lap. Kurt Busch is not. Jeff? 
Yeah, Casey Atwood starting back in 42nd position right now, challenging Bill Elliott, has moved up over 26 positions since the start of this race. Earlier this afternoon, I had a conversation with Ray Everham, and he was down there working with this group, and he was, could not say enough good things about how Casey Atwood had started to get a really good feel for his race car. Early on in the day, they were complaining about, hey, the racetrack is really, really slick. This was on Friday afternoon. Something is either wrong with the car or wrong with the racetrack, and Ray couldn't figure it out. Ray told me, he said he finally went down into the corner, found where somebody had either spilt some oil or some antifreeze or some kind of fluid on the racetrack in the slick spot, Casey was hitting him with the left side tires and upsetting the race car, and he knew then this kid has really got a good feel. Couldn't tell him what was wrong with the car, but he said there was something going on getting, getting into turn one. And Ray said, hey, I've got me a good driver tonight. I think he's starting to show it. Second place battle. Wasn't much of a battle. Ricky Rutt moved inside. Four cars right behind him inside. And now Jeff Gordon trying to follow inside him through. by quarter inside. Inside. I say not much of a battle, Darrell, but it's not as if Rusty couldn't have fought him for that position if he wanted to. We're uh, not even halfway yet. I think Rusty's car has maybe uh, gone away just a little bit. The track's changed. You heard him say that as I talked to him. I think he'll have to make some adjustments to that car to get back to where he was. So he's not going to fight anybody right now. Just follow him. The one thing Rusty could be doing right here, he, these cars caught him and went by him. He may want to get back there and see what these guys are doing, what line they're running right now. Well, if they start running a higher line, he was committed to the bottom, and that's normal Rusty Wallace. He'll hang the inside. He might want to get back and take a look at where they're running, see if he can move up, help himself. 20 cars closing in there pretty good there, DJ. Talking with Dale Jarrett, and you see that he's running just a little bit quicker than the race leader. We heard his crew chief, Todd Parrott, talk to him about how Tony Stewart in the 20 car was going out in, down into turn the one. Leader. That's Todd giving Dale Jarrett his lap times, comparing it to the leader. How important is that, Darrell, to a driver to know how fast he's running compared to the leader? Oh, it means everything. Of course, I always like to use the start-finish line as my reference point to tell me the leader's at the line now, then I know how far behind I am, and then I got to have my lap times. I got to have them every lap, particularly on a track like this, where you're always moving around looking for a better place to run. So that's very, very critical to a driver. Tony Stewart now leading by three seconds over Ricky Rudd. There's his teammate, Bobby Labonte, who is nice. Dick? Well, Tony Stewart indeed is leading this race, and it's a very different strategy for Stewart and his teammate. To begin with, they can't run the same setup successfully here at Richmond, so spring shocks and so forth differ. But Labonte has a very curious strategy. He is talking to his spotter about his brakes, and he wants to know if they ever show blowing. So far, they have not. As Stewart goes into the first turn, his brakes blow red. As Labonte goes in, his do not. That and Dick, Tony Stewart talked to his spotter, Mark Robertson, about the same exact thing. He says, keep an eye on my brakes. If they look like they're too orange, let me know, and I will change how I enter the corner to try to be a little easier on my brakes. Using the nighttime to advantage. Well, that's, that's the whole thing. A driver has to know. He doesn't realize how much he's using those brakes until somebody either the brake dust out of the wheels when they change tires on a pit stop, that's always a good indicator. But here tonight, it's the heat, the glow. 22 laps to halfway in the Pontiac Excitement 400 at Richmond International Raceway. Stewart leading Rudd, Gordon, and Wallace. Tony Stewart has opened up his advantage on Ricky Rudd now to 2.7 seconds. Gordon hanging tightly on to Rudd, second and third. 15 laps to halfway. And Rusty's falling back there. You can see uh, Johnny Benson's in hot pursuit of him, and that's just how quickly things can change on a track like this. But, Darrell, yeah, the racetrack's changing because probably the sealer, another factor. We hadn't talked about it. We started this race. The track temperature was 95 degrees. Now it has cooled down to 85 degrees. That's quite a change in track temperature. Oh, yeah. Still on the lead lap, battling for 16th place, Bill Elliott and Kenny Schrader. There you see a little difference in the air temperature, but the big difference is that 9 or 10 degree swing in the track temperature will tighten the racetrack up. Yeah, it, actually, it's like anything else. It's good for everything. Makes the track better. Car runs a little cooler. Some of these hot brake rotors will get a little cooler. 
water temperature, all those temperatures will go down. It's easier on the driver. These race cars are just like people. They respond to the ambient temperature, what's going on around them. Matter of fact, that's why we call it. We give them names, just like we know them personally. Well, we do know them personally. Why y'all look at me like that? You talk to them all the time, don't talk you? Talk to them all night long. Talk about them? Yeah. Show you the difference in the in the two straightaways here. The front straightaway where Tony's going by now, here he comes down into turn one. 42, about 142 mile an hour down into that corner. He's gonna come off a of turn two here up onto this real, real short back straightaway. Now here he comes down the back, 24, 33, 34. About 10 mile an hour difference because of the difference in the length of the two straightaways. About 10 miles an hour difference, probably about 300 RPM difference. And that's why we thought maybe that somebody like, uh, maybe Jeremy Mayfield was trying to shift gears to maintain that good speed. And Stewart's corner entry speed, his peak speed at the end of the straightaway, is one to two miles an hour faster than Ricky Rudd and Jeff Gordon. That's why he's just eking away bit by bit. It is, but it's also why his brake rotors are a little redder than theirs too. <laughs> And we've talked about brakes for 190 laps. A few weeks ago at Martinsville, we talked about brakes. But the difference here, this place is really harder on brakes than Martinsville because you run a much higher gear here. Your entrance speed, when you back off the throttle, that higher gear don't slow the car down as much as that lower gear, and you use more brakes. Right, and, and here I always felt like I was riding the car down. At Martinsville, I had to stop. Make the thing just make a U-turn like you always, like the paper clip. You get on the brake, try to get off. Get off of it. But here you kind of ride in there with the foot on the brake. Stewart laps past Ron Hornaday. Let's check with Steve. Hey, Mike, with heavy braking, one byproduct is lots of brake dust. Mark Armstrong is the tire changer on the 99, the front tire changer. He's got a light attached to his glove. So down here, he's got lights, camera, and action on pit road. I think they ought to call him E.T. <laughs> you, know, you know, they call him Hollywood. He needs to get up in that hotel with Hammond and Chris Myers. Boy, don't let Hammond hear you say that. It'd be hot. Guys, I got news for you. There's plenty of room for all you guys. Bring it on down. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You got the no vacancy sign out. How can there be room for us? Don't worry. I'll, uh, I'll make room for you, Mike. <laughs> I've got plenty of room for guys like you. <laughs> It's called the outhouse. Oh, I'll see you in Loudon next week. <laughs> I can't wait, buddy. We're at lap 195. We're going to see guys on pit road again here in about another probably 10 or 15 laps. Remember, everybody was on pit road between lap 100 and 110. They'll be making this pit stop again here in five or 10 laps. The pits, the pits are busy because of a tangle up in turn two between Ward Burton and Andy Houston. Put us under caution for the third time tonight, so all the lead lap cars making pit stops, and Andy Houston, who was on track to have his best finish of the season, instead is walking back. Here it is. Headed down into turn one here, Ward Burton up on the outside of Andy Houston, going around the wreck car of Brett Bodine. Ward drops to the inside and gives Andy a little shot right there, and then that wasn't enough. He decided he might give him a little bit more. Boy, he hit that wall hard. He did. That slow, you know, folks, that's in slow motion, so you don't really get a good sensation of what it's like, but that's a pretty hard lick into the back straightaway wall. Bam. Daryl, on that second one, it looked as if Andy would gotten loose and he'd lost his forward motion. Ward had a lot of momentum coming up off that corner. Yeah, Ward's going to turn under him right here and gas it, and whoops, got him sideways. I don't think it, uh, yeah, Andy got loose. Actually, Ward never, <laughs> Ward never even touched him. <laughs> Andy got a little, I think he probably tried to accelerate up out of that corner, and uh, when he did, he was trying to stay ahead of Ward, lost it. Yeah, they was out there on a 90 to 100 lap tires. Oh, tires won't hook up when they got that many laps on them. Now he got a little shot there that first time got him sideways and then I think he probably over tried to overdrive it up off the corner. Boy the real winner off pit road Ricky Rudd that Texaco Haviland group they won the battle off pit road four tires here at the halfway mark. Talked about it in the beginning temper short track full moon. Boy that's a shame and it's so frustrating for that young man. 
and he had a, he had a great run going, doing a good job, and he needed a great run. That team has struggled. We are halfway in the Pontiac Excitement 400, a race that's living up to its name. And Ricky Rudd, after pit stops, is our leader over Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, Tony Stewart, and Jeff Gordon. Short Track Saturday night on FX. It's full moon Short Track Saturday night. Now we're glad you're watching this telecast tonight. We have several more for you on Saturday nights and hope you'll also visit your local Saturday night racetrack. But now, time for our Pep Boys trivia. Who's the only driver to win a Bush and Winston Cup race at Richmond in the same weekend? I, you know the answer to It's got to be Jeff Burton or it's got to be Mark Martin, but I'm going to say, I'm going to think it's Jeff Burton. Answer to most Bush questions is Mark Martin. Exactly. Harry Gant! <laughs> the fall of 1991. How about that? That was my answer last night, just wrong question. <laughs> <laughs> you were a, a day ahead of yourself. That was just before racing really started, 1991. We're under caution at lap 205. Wow, what's that? For uh, Andy Flying out of that center. Bobby Hamilton, I'm not sure. Hambone is losing. Hope those are ice cubes ice from this cold drink cup. Some big ice cubes. Pretty hot out there, but well, oh, there's Bobby. Yeah, now he's gonna now he's gonna put his gloves back on. He's uh didn't want to get his gloves wet. Now, getting ready to go back to racing, and we will when we come back to Richmond. We're just past halfway. A lot of racing, a lot of exciting to go here on FX. Welcome back to Richmond International Raceway. Hard at work in the Hollywood Hammond Hotel. They spend more they money on more stuff down there. How much more stuff can they I get? Don't know. That I don't know, y'all. Let me let's take care of some real business here. Let me talk to Ricky Rudd a minute. See what he's doing. Let's do that. Hey, Ricky Rudd, DW up my TV booth. Uh, old Phoenix and car running pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, Darrell, we're you know, we're pretty steady. You know, we're not we're not super, but uh, hey, we're real good. Tony jumped out there. And, Looks like he's got us covered a little bit. I think he's just playing with us right now. But towards the end of that run, we start inching back up on him. Uh, kind of afraid to make too many adjustments. You know, we're so good that uh, you make one little adjustment, next thing you know, you're in the back of the pack getting lapped. So we're probably just going to stick to what we got and hope the track comes to us a little bit. The brake's working okay tonight. A lot of people have been complaining about that. Man, we got those right bestest brakes. They stop on a dime. I'm tickled to death with them. <laughs> All right, 10 for it. Back back didn't get me in trouble, is he? He'll get a little sassy every now and then. We gotta put him in his place every once in a while. Them Hollywood glasses is what it is. I think it has something to do with that name change. Somewhere along where he went from fat back to Michael. Uh, he got a little sassy. <laughs> All right, man. Ten four. Good luck to you. Now, Larry Max said, "Tell you he's got you picked in the pool tonight." Tell him I hope I don't let him down, and we'll uh, maybe we'll get a little cut of that pool. I guarantee it. Let's see, what's 10% what's of nothing? Because <laughs> that's what the pool pays around here. 209 laps complete. We're just half past halfway, cleaning up from the third caution of the night. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Richmond. They've had to put Speedy Dry all the way around the racetrack uh, in the low groove, somebody dropping fluid. And the jet blower, that's a helicopter jet engine hooked up there to blow the track dry. Speaking of blowing. Yeah, are there blow dryers in the Hollywood Hammond Hotel? No, but there's a lot of wind going on in Wait there. Wait a minute. Is there anybody in the Hollywood Hammond Hotel? I'll tell you. I that figures. I, I can't believe it. Normally they get catering in but, there. Where, where do you suppose they went they to get, eat? Look, well, chairs I, is empty. I know they're out to lunch. Yeah, but we know that. They're also out to lunch somewhere. Now we got 40 cameras here. You'd think we could find them. Hey. They want grits. What, I don't. You, know, you don't know what grits are, do you? Is that part of the grill on the no, car? No, no, no. That's grits over there. Oh, okay. Back there is what you call good southern eating. This is not caviar. You can see it. You got some sausage, some eggs, country ham, yeah, by some the way, potatoes. Uh, by the way, the guy on table 43 said you look good in an apron, too, oh, which I heard. I'm telling you right now. I wonder, start, what, I wonder what they're eating up in the food. You think they're right, a I got news over? for you right now. They got a lot of bologna in the bologna. Yeah, and a lot of ham, too, I guarantee sure. you that. Guys, 
don't quit your day job, or maybe you ought to, and maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a better future there than television. That's Catfish and his <laughs> assistant. That's who that is. You know why we call him Catfish? Nope. He can blow up an orange sack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're doing a fine job. Cleanup continues, and hopefully we'll be racing when we come back. They've just waved the green flag. We're racing again at Richmond. 215 laps. Ricky Rudd, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin take off on the restart. I think Rusty probably made some really good adjustments. That was a timely caution for him because his car had gotten off a little bit. I'll be uh, curious to see if he can go back up there and kind of strike out like he did before early in the day. 17 lead lap cars. Kenny Wallace, first of those, a lap down in 18. Ricky Rudd seemed to think that Tony Stewart was kind of playing with him, so we'll see what Tony does as he moves around Mark Martin. Oh, trouble right here on the front. Kurt, Kurt Busch goes spinning. And a lot of brake and tire smoke trying to avoid him. Here comes Peoples all over the place trying to get laps back, but I don't think they're going to make it this time. No, Kenny Wallace was way too far back to have a run at Ricky Rudd. Fourth caution of the night, it comes at lap 218. Of course, it's just one or two laps after a restart. Oh, he, he, he just gets got loose, loose. And guess who helps him on around? Matt Kenseth, teammate, teammate, 17 car. But Kurt definitely had gotten loose before Matt ever got near him. Right. Darrell, if, if Kenseth hadn't helped him around, did he risk being punted from behind? What he risked I mean, if he hadn't was kept going? is the car turning dead right, what he risked. Oh. Because he had it sideways. When it come back around, he'd have shot right straight across in front of everybody and probably wiped out a bunch of cars. So I guess if you want to be kind to Matt Kenseth, he did him a favor. Because <laughs> there were about 20 or 25 cars right behind oh, him yeah. coming at him. Oh, yeah. Here they all are from Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s butt camp. Saw Ward Burton in the 22 car really had to lock his tires up. And that old yellow smoke comes flying up off those cars. Now Andy Houston turned around in turn two, knocked out of the race. Jeannie's with him. Yes, Mike Joy, he's standing here. Well, everybody's pitching in on his car. Ricky Craven's crew, Ricky Rudd's crew's over here as well. But you got some help on the track. A little love tap from Ward Burton. Was that a rookie initiation? Yeah, it was. And, uh, you know, the McDonald's Ford was running awesome tonight. Started 34th, worked our way up to 11th. Had an ignition box problem and uh, lost a lot of ground, and that's what got us back there. But uh, Ward Burton evidently has some kind of problem with me. He run over me at Martinsville under caution, and uh, now he just takes me out. I mean, no rubbing, no bumping or anything to make the pass. And uh, pass him clean, and he runs in the back of me and spins me around. But uh, don't even know the guy. Never really talked to him. Uh, all I know that uh, for some reason he doesn't like me. But uh, the drive through crew is going to try to fix this car and uh, get back out there just get some points. Try to get to the bottom of this. Matt Yoakum? Well, Tony Stewart was the big loser on that last round of pit stops, dropping from first to fourth. He's already climbed up one spot. He was complaining earlier about his car needing a little more forward bite up off the corner. After that last pit stop, he said his car is a little bit better. They did go up one round on the track bar. He had 92 laps on that set of tires. He says the car is still very good, but they had a 17-second change pit stop. Let's go to Steve Burns. Well, Matt, Ricky Rudd's team didn't make any adjustments to the 28, but the two bunch did. They came in fourth, one out second. While they were on pit road, they lowered the track bar one round. Also took a pound out of the left front, the left rear, and the right rear. Dick? Lots of significant adjustments around me. Jimmy Spencer, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew both removed spring rubbers. Bobby Labonte's crew took it out of the right front, trying to make that car handle a little bit better. Upstairs. And back under green at lap 221. Andy Houston is the only car in the garage. Even Ricky Craven's made repairs and come back out. And he would, uh, may not know Ward Burton, but he was getting ready to send him a little telegraph there with that helmet. Kenny Wallace again trying to get back on the lead lap side by side with Rusty, but Ricky Rudd is pulled out ahead of them all. He's looking out at Kenny Wallace's car right here. He'd love to stay with these guys. There goes Rusty right on down in there, right under Ricky Rudd. Kenny yeah, outside. Trying to get yeah, outside. With him. Tony Stewart in that 20 car. Ricky Rudd said he was just playing with him. He's pulled right up on the rear bump, bumper in third place. Tony's got that. He's got that good outside line. He goes in a little high, runs through the center of the corner, and then as we saw earlier, he can cut that thing right to the bottom. So that car is hooked up. 
Right behind them, Jeff Gordon underneath Mark Martin, and that will change fourth place. He's diamond the corner off now. He drives in, lets it float up in the middle, then he turns it right to the bottom. Here he comes up high. Dale Jarrett coming. First move toward the front five we've seen from Jarrett tonight. Well, I think he got a wake-up call there a little bit ago when uh, Todd called him and said that 20 car was coming. He's been the past ever since. His pit crew redeemed himself on this last pit stop. Yep. He picked up about two spots. This is the same car that Dale Jarrett won Martinsville with about three or four weeks ago. That's a good hot rod, we know. Boy, after these restarts, ooh, boy. Very intense racing. Kevin Harvick in the 29 car right now. He's a lap down. He's in 19th position. To see Steve Park come around the outside and take him three wide down into turn one. And that's easy to do here, Mike. You get two guys racing each other, one on the outside, one on the end, one next to each other, and that leaves a whole lot of room down this big sweeping front straightaway to drop to the bottom. But you can't make the turn that way. We'll have Winston Cup action on FX in two weeks. NASCAR's all-star night, the Winston from Lowe's Motor Speedway in Charlotte. And very seldom have we had a Winston that wasn't filled with controversy. Always controversy in the Winston. Well, of course, you're not in it this year, so... So I'll be able to create some controversy. Okay. <laughs> 70 laps, though, no points. The teams, they pull out all the stops. They put those qualifying motors in there. They set those cars up to run free, going after that big pot of gold. 30 laps, 30 laps, and then a 10-lap shootout for, what, $250,000. Pretty good night's work. I like a Saturday night like that. And no points to worry about. They let the rough side drag on that Saturday night. Looking back from Kenny Wallace, as you watch Wallace at work trying to hold off Jeff Gordon, who is the fourth-place car. Kenny's car is working pretty darn good. I mean, you watch him with his hands on the wheel, down into turn one. Kind of got his hand right over the top there. Car not too tight, back in the throttle. Whoa, whoa, got a little loose off of there. What I see right there, Daryl, is he's not driving the cars deep in the corners, Jeff Gordon, but Jeff Gordon's paying a little price getting off the corner because of how deep he's going in the corner. And when you drive in hard, you got to keep your foot on that brake a little bit longer, and it just keeps the car from turning. When your foot's on the brake, the car will not turn. you got to get off the brake. Right there in turn one and two, you saw how much ground uh, Jeff Gordon made up on him. Look how much he lost down the back straightaway because he didn't get back to the throttle as quick. Kenny's oldest brother, Rusty Wallace, trying to pull away from Ricky Rudd, and he's about seven-tenths of a second up on Rudd right now on this track. Seven-tenths of a second is about six or seven. Trouble, calling. trouble, big trouble. Down the front, cars going everywhere. Blaney and Michael Belkins, they're still wrecking the five car. And here comes the leader. Caution out, spotters backing everybody down. Kenny Wallace could not get his lap back despite Rusty jumping on the brakes, and the accident scene is pretty clear when they get there. Michael. A lot of damage to the rear of that car. Everybody got Terry their Labonte. car going. Yeah, but there's a bunch of cars that, uh, particularly Terry Labonte and Michael's car were torn up the worst. Here's how it started. Coming up off turn four. Really, as I just had said, after these restarts, there's some really intense racing going on back in the field here. Ooh. Oh, I see uh, Kenny Schrader and Bill Elliott bounced off each other. Michael was there. Bobby Hamilton slides through. Casey Atwood spinning right through the middle of it. It's like I said, you can get three wide. The track is wide enough down the center of this front straightaway, but when they get down here to the closer to turn one, Something's got to give. Kenny and Bill Elliott get together and turn Michael around. Dale Jr. does a good job avoiding it. Bobby Hamilton. Bobby Hamilton got some damage. 19 car. Bunch of cars got damage. From Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s butt cam. Well, he did a good job of getting through this mess. Now, some of the lead lap cars have pitted, but not the front runners. No, what, what happened about first through eight is they stayed out there. Man, that real time is it's incredible when you see them coming at you like that. 
all the leaders was on pit road at lap 197. Now, that was about 40 laps ago, but we run about 27 caution laps. So not a lot of laps on our tires, but again, a lot of the guys at the back of the lead pack decided to come to pit road. Dick? Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. had to pit because he had flat spotted tires. Michael Waltrip has to pit because the whole back end of this race car is all torn up. Spoiler is off of it. That's going to be a huge problem. They've got electric saws out there trying to cut enough stuff off this car so they can at least have half a chance of rebuilding the back end. And they are going to have to do that for Michael Waltrip to get back on the racetrack. Right now, they wouldn't even be able to put gas in this thing. It is so bad up, Mike. Bobby Hamilton as well, flailing sheet metal on the right side. Going to put a big Band-Aid on it. Yeah, they just get rid of most of that. It's hanging loose. They got saws. Jimmy Ellings, the crew chief, on the right of your screen working, and now they'll just Band-Aid the rest. Go, 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 you want to get rid of all the sheet metal, but you want to keep that deck lid. You want to keep, keep that, that part right there, that big spoiler. You got to keep that on there. You can't drive the car. They couldn't take any more time to fix it because the pace car is coming, and he doesn't want to lose a lap there. Michael Waltrip brushes the wall after contact with Bill Elliott, who was bumped by Kenny Schrader, and that puts us under caution number five on full moon Saturday night at Richmond. Last year, Tony Stewart won more races than any Winston Cup driver. Earnhardt Jr. leaves, and the crowd comes to its feet. Jeff Gordon's the man on the move. He's got a fast car, and that's a money man. He is in control of the race. He just got to sit there and keep everybody at bay. What a great drive by Ricky Rudd. You get in the lead, it fixes everything. You ever notice that? 237 laps complete, 163 to go here at Richmond International Raceway. Rusty Wallace back up front. Ricky Rudd, Tony Stewart, now youngest brother Kenny Wallace trying to get a lap back from Rusty, and Kenny's had a pretty good car in this last green flag run. Yeah, he has been able to hang right there with him, but uh, I think Rusty will probably be a little bit more concerned about Ricky Rudd than he will his brother. That's the other brother, Mike Wallace, in the seven car. He's two laps down there behind Kenny Wallace. Boy, I tell you, for these restarts, anytime we get cautions against the restarts, it gets everybody bunched up, and boy, it's treacherous. Well, let's crank it up for you a little bit here and let you enjoy. 750 or more times 40 whatever pure American horsepower. Side for second, Tony Stewart on the outside of Ricky Rudd. Boy, Stewart's car is so good getting in the corner. Man, he can drive that thing in there. Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, both of them working that second groove. Darrell's taking about over 200 laps. That second groove is in there. And don't look now, but old Ups is right there with him. <laughs> Dale Jarrett moving into the top five for the first time tonight. I love it. I, you know, that's funny. His crew chief called him up and said, you need to pick it up a little bit. That 20 car is coming. And I'll be darned if he didn't turn on the afterburner. Remember how he and Ricky Rudd dueled at Martinsville. The two Robert Yates team cars finishing 1-2. First time they had done that. Well, Ricky's kind of committed to the bottom, and everybody seems to be sailing around him on the outside. He needs to get behind these guys, see what they're doing, and start trying to do the same thing. Gordon is the first car tonight, Darrell, I think that we've seen as strong in the high lane of the racetrack as Tony Stewart. I think he's been kind of going to school on old Tony. Several cars knocked out in that accident at lap 232. Here's Jeannie. Yes, Mike Joy, it's very busy in the garage right now. Michael Waltrip on one side, Terry Lavani here on the other. Can you take us through what happened? Really sure what happened up in front of me there uh, some couple guys got turned around or something and there was a lot of smoke i had a hole there and uh, it kind of closed up when i was about halfway through it so it knocked the right rear out from under it and uh we're we're gonna try to fix it and get get back out just to make everybody feel good but uh, we're pretty much done for the night all right thanks for the time matt yokum 
Well, down here in the nine pit, Bill Elliott has pulled his car behind the wall. Double trouble for Bill Elliott. He's pointing to his dash panel. They had some kind of fire underneath the dash. So they're going to change the dash panel. Also, the radiator has been knocked in, so they're going to have to change the radiator as well. Bad luck for Bill Elliott. Elliott's top five finish at Daytona has been the sole bright spot of his season. That's his only top ten. He's at three four, four 14th place finishes. Next best after his fifth at Daytona. And look at that dash panel on Bill Elliott's cars. All these cars have a full steel dash in them, but we have an insert that goes right in front of the driver that has the gauges, the switches, and so many of the electrical connections, and you can easily change it out. I won't say easily, but a lot easier than taking a whole dashboard out. Ricky Rudd working the bottom lane now on his Robert Yates teammate, Dale he, Jarrett. He fought him for a while on the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah. He finally had to give it up. Steve? Yeah, one of the problems for Ricky Rudd is we've run a lot of caution laps, Mike. It takes him a while. His car is tight when he first starts a green flag run. It takes him a while for the tires to get up to where he likes them. But again, he does not. We've just heard that he does not like this set of tires. So he's got a little bit more of a problem than just being tight. So Rudd sits in fifth behind Rusty Wallace, Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, and Dale Jarrett. There's Earnhardt Jr. just out of the top ten with Mark Martin. A look at Robert Yates racing at Richmond. Five victories. The one win for Davey Allison. That was actually Davey's last Winston Cup win in 1993. Good lap, nice and smooth. 22, 17, 25 on the leader. That's 22.17 seconds for him, 22.25, that's 25, the race leader. And, and that's you the man. Reference to. You're referencing to that race leader. That's who's important right yeah. now. And that's that's what you want to hear because that's that's a little quicker than the leader. And uh, that means he's closing the gap just ever so slightly. Dale Jarrett has got himself in a great position now. I mean, he's right there. It's halfway of the race, a little over halfway, 250 laps. Sitting there in the catbird seat now. Eighth and ninth place battle, Steve Park and Jimmy Spencer. Now, on that last caution, Steve Park, he was one of the first cars to hit pit road. Jimmy Spencer was like in eighth place. He stayed out, so this is the difference right here between a little bit fresher tires. Dale Earnhardt Jr. as well was on pit road. See Matt Kenseth in the midst of that mix, 17. He's up to seventh, looking for his second top 10 finish of the season. He was sixth at Martinsville and finished top five last night in the Bush race. Well, these guys right here are all going at it pretty hot and heavy, too. Lap cars in the mix and then lead lap cars trying to get through. I'm sure what Steve Park, Dale Earnhardt Jr., a lot of these guys would like to see here just the next few laps. They'd probably maybe like to see a caution flag. That means all those guys in front of them would probably come to pit road and they'd get some track position. They could stay out, yeah. Steve Park moving up on Matt Kenseth for seventh place. Matt? Well, Mike, the reason why they pitted under that caution, Steve Park was not happy with that set of tires. He was complaining the car was still tight, so they took the opportunity. They only lost two spots. Also, an update on Jeff Gordon. He's tight in the center of the corner and loose off. And that's kind of the way this track will go. It'll get real tight through the center. That's why you see the cars move up to that higher line, and then they're loose off because eventually everybody's going to come off in the same place, and that's where the sealer wears off. And what also happened when you're tight in the center, you've got the steering wheel turn, you've got it turn. Finally, the front tires bite, and the rear tires can't keep up. The back end comes around. Rusty Wallace with a 1.3 second advantage on Tony Stewart. Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, Ricky Rudd, the top five, then Benson, Park, Earnhardt Jr., Kenseth, and Spencer. Two hundred sixty-two laps complete in the Pontiac Excitement 400. Rusty Wallace now with an eight tenths of a second lead on Jeff Gordon. Each tenth here is about a car length on a three-quarter mile racetrack. So make that about eight car lengths on Tony Stewart. Jeff Gordon beginning to close on Stewart somewhat. Ricky Rudd a solid fourth. Dale Jarrett has fallen back from Rudd quite a bit now in fifth place. And then it's a gap back to Johnny Benson in sixth. How about this 99 car? Jeff Burton started 17th. He just moved into the top 10. He's in 10th place. 
they probably had one of the worst races you could have at Fontana last week, but this is the car that he ran third with at Martinsville a few weeks ago. Frank Stoddard, they was pretty pleased after practice yesterday, and he's moving forward, especially, it's like the racetrack's coming to this group. Yeah, it is. That's some of that thing, that's one of those anticipation things you gotta do, anticipate what this thing's gonna be like in the last hundred laps. Hard to believe Jeff Burton's only had one top five finish this year, third at Martinsville. And our pole sitter, he's kind of drifted back through the field, too. Mark Martin. I don't think his setup was uh, maybe good for the track changing. How Matt. about it, Matt? Do you know anything about that? Well, DW, I walked down to the sixth pit, and it's so tough to hear down here being the first pit stall entering turn one. So I wrote on my notepad to Sean Parker, the car chief, are you loose in or loose off? And he crossed it out and wrote, we are loose everywhere. Marcus is trying to hang on. Kenny Schrader, Bobby Labonte battling for 14th and 15th place. Right behind Martin. Kurt Busch in the 97 car right now. He's one lap down, one lap down. He was involved in that accident on the front stretch a while ago and spun. And Casey Atwood, another car involved in that accident, is still on the lead lap trailing this pack. What a run that rookie's had tonight. Yeah, he was in that wreck, but it didn't get a lot of damage and was able to keep going. Haven't said a lot about the 40 car, Sterling Marlin, but he's right there in 12th spot. And again, sort of the leader of the Dodge Brigade. This group, they changed a lot on this race car last night and today. They were not happy at all after happy hour. But he said, you know, we ran good at Martinsville with this car. We wasn't good. We was not very pleased with happy hour at Martinsville. So maybe we're going to fall in the same category. And he's sitting here running in 12th position. And at 12th, he is the highest place Dodge in the race. Andy Houston has made repairs. His crew has made repairs. He is back on track. So the only cars in the garage right now are Ricky Craven, who came back on track and has returned to the garage. Terry Labonte and Bill Elliott's cars are being worked on in the garage. And Darrell, it's not unusual for about 35, 36, 7 cars to be running at the end of this race. Oh no, this uh, attrition is usually not that high here uh, other than bent up sheet metal. Yeah, it's not unusual for 32 of those 37 to be pretty well banged up. Oh yeah, they've always got a lot of damage on them from uh, collisions that they've been in. But the teams have gotten so good about getting these cars back in the race and keeping them on the racetrack. They make repairs and get them back out there because everybody's thinking that about the points. And I tell you, Tony Stewart is getting a little bit closer to Rusty again. Yeah, Fox Track shows that he has cut Wallace's lead in half since we came back from the last break. Wonder if he'll be a little more courteous when he passes this time. Wonder if Rusty will remember what happened the last time he passed him. We've been on a fairly long green run. They'll start catching some lap cars here. Certainly will make a difference as well. These are all things that, as a former driver, I wonder about. <laughs> uh, Daryl, drivers don't hold grudges, do they? Well, some seem to have better memories than others. Stewart is there. He caught Wallace in a hurry. Just where he was so strong earlier, he's strong off the corner, on the exit of the corner. Stewart tried running a few laps down at the bottom of the racetrack and then went back up top. Now, Rusty, in the past, you know, he's been running right around the bottom, but I think he realizes Tony's there. We'll see how it works out. Rusty goes in on the bottom, pushes up a little bit more than he has been. The grip should be pretty good right where they're running. How hard do you want to fight him, Darrell, with still 125 laps to go? Whoa, you don't want to give up a whole lot, particularly when you saw how far away he got the last time. So this might be a good time to just see if you can hold him off or not. Wallace has led 287 of the last 324 laps. But I do know this. If he got that nose up under me like he did last time, I would give him a little more room. This is the same car that Rusty Robin Pemberton, these guys had here in the in the fall race, uh, was set on the pole, was lead the race when the engine let go. Well, Rusty's one of those guys that whatever the most gear is that there anybody out there is going to have, if it's a 500 or 514, he's going to have the most gear. Well, look at the success rate or success record of your five drivers at the front of the field. There's a lot of wind packed up there in those front five spots. 
I call that good experience. Those are all the good experience drivers there. Of course, Tony Stewart has only been in the, the series a little over two years. What's interesting about Stewart's nine wins is they've come on Outside five different size there. racetracks. He's one and a half and three quarter and mile tracks, the one and a half and the two mile tracks. Well, think about this. Jeff Gordon hadn't been in this series but about 10 years. That's so. a good point. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's poised to break a lot of records. 121 laps to go at Richmond International Raceway. Rusty Wallace and Tony Stewart just about a car length apart with Jeff Gordon a further half second back. You're watching NASCAR on FX. We're under caution for the sixth time tonight. These are the lap down cars pitting. Andy Houston had something let go on his Cal Wells number 96 down in turn two. Might have put a bit of fluid there you see it coming out the tailpipes and all over so caution came out and pit stops for the leaders now rusty's going to be one of the first ones to peel off in his pits he's pitting back up about two-thirds way down pit road and he's got an opening in front of him see he gets the car turned out he don't have to worry about getting blocked in i used to turn my car out like that and make jeff and them mad because they wanted me to pull straight in my pit but the driver likes to nose that nose out so he can get a good straight run out of the pit there one thing i think you'll notice is they get ready to come out of pit road that little turnout helped Rusty get going right there and beat the 20 car out. He had to kind of turn to get around the car right behind him, which was Jeff Gordon, who also got boxed in by the one. It really hurt his pit stop. He had to back up. There you see Jeff Gordon have to back up. Cost him a lot of time. And every time that clock's going tick, tick, these other guys is leaving pit road. So Wallace and crew, at least for this round of pit stops, made a good call with their choice of pit selection. If you can't be the first down pit road, Wallace said, well, let's take the first opening in front of us, and it paid off. You see, he came in first and came out first. Gordon had to back up, and he was the big loser among the top five. Let's get set for this restart. Still 16 cars on the lead lap. And they're not quite, I don't think, Larry and I talked about this, in their pit window. They may be able to, some, some guys can stretch it this far. It's going to be close. 115 laps to go. They're going to turn up quick. They do. It's time to go racing, boys. It's all the saving whatever you got's over with now. Use it up. I got a feeling that 20 car is going to be on the move. Ward Burton, the first of the cars to lap down, unable to take advantage of Rusty Wallace on the restart. Then again, nobody's been able to all night. For more on Rusty's stop, here's Steve. Well, Mike, the adjustment they made was they went down just a quarter turn on the track bar. They debated making an air pressure adjustment, but Rusty said, nope, I like them the way they are. So just a quarter turn down on that track bar, Matt. Steve, Tony Stewart came in second, had a 15.3 second pit stop. No changes on the 20 car. He went back out second to Dick Burford. Jeff Burton and Dale Earnhardt Jr. both took on four tires, a can of gas, made no changes whatsoever to their race cars, and both did it so well that they picked up spots on pit road. Ginny Stenz. Well, Dale Stewart has been complaining of tightness most of the evening here. They were debating a track bar adjustment, but went with that right rear tire pressure adjustment again, this time taking a half pound out. He did take four tires, gas, and this pit stop going much better as crew chief Todd Parrott stood on the wall and cheered his guys on. Second place, Ricky Rudd takes it away from Tony. Boy, R Ricky was really getting off of turn four, and uh, he's been putting that nose underneath Tony. He finally got by him. Boy, Darrell, one thing I noticed through our pit reports there, these guys, they're getting down the fine tunage adjustment. Quarter turns on track bar, that's like a sixteenth of an inch. Half a pound of air pressure, that's like five pounds of spring rate. Not very big adjustment. No, it's, most of these guys are pretty good, and they don't want to make any big adjustments. They just want to try to tune her in so that they can go to the, to the end. Stewart backing up. Here comes Jarrett on the outside. It's not uncommon to see Tony's car not real good on a restart, but then really get good as the run goes along. Jeff right Gordon now, in 24 car, these guys getting better and better as the night gets on. Right now, Ricky Rudd looks to me like he's a very hot car. To go the distance without another stop, the lead lap cars would have to go about 116 laps. I believe they can do it. They've been going up. They went 110. I believe they can do it. That hot car, that 28 car, he wants the lead here.
Well, that change really worked on Ricky Rudd because on the last uh, couple of restarts, he has not been very strong. Here's where he's really good, right off turn four. Right around the bottom, really accelerates up out of that corner. Rusty Wallace, he's not ready to give it up. Running that high line about two and a half lanes up. He'll get a no, he'll get upside of him over there, but Ricky's got the bottom and should be able to come up in front of him. No, he's going to be a little cautious. Off of this corner is where Ricky's really been good. Right off the bottom, he really clears Rusty right here. Rusty fights back. Kind of interesting how Rusty's changed his line because he was committed to the bottom, but now he's around the top and running a little better. I'm watching our score monitor. Even these guys running side by side, they're still about a tenth quicker than the third place car, Dale Jarrett. Now Rusty has the edge at turn four. Yep. He's making that outside work for him. You get that thing down on the inside unless you really got it where you can get back in the throttle hard. It takes a lot of power to pull up out of that hole. Yeah, buddy. Nice job. Wallace holds the lead. Rudd, Jarrett, Gordon, Stewart, Benson. Speeds at the line. Gordon quickens. No. Steve Park quickens. Jeff? Mike, one thing we were talking about earlier, what was happening with Tony Stewart. I talked to Greg Zippadelli and several crew chiefs, Tony Urey on Dale, Jer Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. They all said un under race conditions, when they dropped the air pressure down, it took about eight to ten laps for the tires to really hook up. And they had to be real careful not to get themselves in trouble. So it, that may be what's going on with the 20 car. You get the pressure down to get that forward bite off the corner, and those rear tires, it takes a while for them to come around and kind of get the car going back the other way. And I know the fans are probably asking, well, why do they drop them down then if it takes that long to come in? But what you're looking for is the long run. Oh, yeah. How the tires are 50 laps, 60 laps into a run. Yeah, because the, the give up, man, big trouble. trouble. Turn three, one car up against the wall, Jerry and Nadeau. Jerry Nadeau has shortened up the rear end of his second car of the weekend. He had a similar crash at turn two in practice. Now we were talking about fuel mileage. Dale Earnhardt Jr. went 112 laps, which included five laps of caution plus the four pace laps before he pitted for the first time. And we've only run 13 laps since that last caution. Just remember, these caution laps, they will help fuel mileage. Not sure if there was anything between John Andretti and Jerry Nadeau, but there with Nadeau ending up in the fence at turn three. Now he did crash in practice and then here is the second lap of qualifying for Nadeau, actually quicker than his first lap, even with the car going around. So he did time trial into the field. It's been a tough weekend at Richmond for Nadeau. Talk to his group, this is the car that he ran fourth with in the Winston a year ago and also Ricky Hendrick drove this car in an ARCA race at Charlotte in October. It was their backup car for here. They got a lot of work to do, but they got a week to get it ready for Charlotte. Everybody calculating fuel mileage under the lights and the full moon at Richmond International Raceway. 101 laps to go. Welcome back to Richmond. 301 laps complete of the 400. Jerry Nadeau's crash in turn three puts us under the seventh caution of the day. Or night, as you will. This is from Bobby Hamilton's car. We may have found out what caused that problem there. Looks like they're getting together going down through there. Oh, yeah. They didn't stay together. No. But they got together. Steve Burns? Robin Pepperson. Robin, can you run the rest this way? What's your strategy for the end of this race? I don't think there is any right yet. There's 200 laps. There's still a long way to go. We'll see what happens. Go to Jeannie. Todd of course, he's talking to his driver, so we will respect that and give him one moment. Todd, we're trying to figure out, can you go the rest of the way? What's the strategy? Uh, yeah, we can make it the rest of the way. So uh, we'll see what happens here. What's the plan? Uh, oh, no. See, just in time, he had to go back to work. We won't get the plan, but we know he can make it the rest of the way. That's because we're going green, Jeannie. Uh -huh. Green flag back out at lap 303. 97 laps to go. Ward Burton, that 22 car, he'd like to get that lap back. He's going to have to have a strong horse to get by Rusty Wallace, though. Yeah, those uh, 
the two car and that 28 car, both those cars are bad fast right now. Go to Tony Stewart's pit, Matt. Well, Mike, Greg Zipidelli's car, the 20 car of Tony Stewart, restarted in fifth. Greg, how long will it take for your car to come in? Uh, we're down a little bit on air pressure. Seems like it takes about 15, 20 laps for it to come around. I hope we don't give up too much on the front side here with only 100 to go. And fuel will not be a concern. They can go the distance. Thanks, Matt. Just to update you, we must have had five or six cars that was a little concerned about the fuel because under that caution, Sterling Marlin, Mark Martin, Steve Park, Jimmy Spencer, Casey Atwood, Dale Earnhardt Jr., they came in the pits, got four tires, except Sterling Marlin, just a little bit of fuel only. So these cars should be able to go the distance now. It's probably borderline on some of those guys, and I think it's borderline on the leaders. But I uh, also think they can make it, Ari. Yeah, we run those cautions on this three-quarter mile racetrack. Darrell always figured three cautions is like one green lap. Those pit stops were a break for Bobby Labonte and Ken Schrader, who were behind most of those cars, but now take this restart 10th and 11th. Now, watch the difference in this. Here you go down the back straightaway. You see 8,400 there look like, down to about 5,600 in the turn. Now, watch how much more you turn down the front straightaway here. 83, 88, almost 8,900, 84, 85 into the turn into the back. Now watch how much hot gets on the brakes right here. Got a motor problem. Stays on him, tries to get off of him. Now he's off. And Jarrett is dropping back a bit. Gordon there. Jarrett looks to the inside, but a big gap has opened up between this battle and the leader. Boy, if he's got a motor problem, it's not a very bad one. Not a, it doesn't appear to be. Coming off turn four, he started down the front straightaway. Let's see if we can see any here of it there. That one don't have uh, any turning the same RPMs he was turning. She's got 8,900, so she's not, she's not struggling too much. Now Stewart looking low on Jarrett. Trying to hear it. I don't hear anything. The engine's running clean. I think they may just be warning him about, I heard him say it doesn't have a chip in it. it means it doesn't have a rev limiter in it, and they probably don't want to turn the thing too much right at this point. And what the rev limiter chip will do, they can change that chip. They put a 9,000 chip, 8,900 chip, and when it gets that RPMs, it actually kill a cylinder or two. Drive like to be going all night. Let's check with that. While you guys were talking about the chips in the car, Robin Pemberton, who is Rusty Wallace's crew chief, says after a race where Rusty's got a shot to win it, they take a look at the floorboards of the car and invariably they find the chip that's supposed to be in the ignition system. Rusty's figured out a way to lean over from the cockpit of the car, grab the thing right out of the ignition system. Pull it out and get himself spilled some more RPM. I bet that chip's floating around on the floorboards right now. <laughs> but you know, also, Darrell, what teams will do, these cars have two ignition systems, and the reason sometimes they'll swap ignition systems late in the race, it'll have a higher rev limiter chip in that particular ignition system. Exactly. When it comes showtime, buddy, you turn off everything, including the rev limiter. Junior uh, Johnson always told me, said, boy, I don't want nothing on my car to slow it down. Dale Earnhardt Jr. just got past Johnny Benson for sixth place. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was one of the cars that pitted about 14 laps ago into that last caution and got four tires. And remember, he was a strong, strong contender, won this race last year, hadn't heard a lot out of him, but uh, he's lurking there and he's been in the pits, got fresh tires. Speaking of lurking, look at Ricky Rudd on the bottom side of this racetrack in that 28 car. He gets off of turn four so well, down on the bottom, in the throttle, that's really where he's strong. Rusty seems to be a little better, maybe off the two or about the same, but Ricky really eats him up off of turn four. Well, if you have a choice, that's the turn that leads to the finish line. Wallace, Rush, Gordon, Jarrett, and Stewart. Then a little gap, Earnhardt Jr. and Benson. We'll be right back. Seventy-eight laps to go at Richmond. Here's where your Coke family of drivers sits in the point standings after the ten races completed. Jared, of course, the point leader. 
Rudd Park Stewart in the top ten. And a look back through the Coke family of drivers. Rusty Wallace, your leader. Ricky Rudd is right there, and Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart have caught them. But how about that red bus yeah, last this car, that fifth place car, Dale Earnhardt Jr., last 10 laps. Darrell, we've been watching this scoring monitor. He's one of the fastest race cars out there. He's been closing up on the leaders in a hurry. Trouble for Kenny Wallace. Now he's off on the apron over there. Looks like he's taking it to the garage. And Kenny is going to the garage. Second race this year that that Eel River Racing Team has had a sponsor. And Wallace will join Ricky Craven, Andy Houston, and Jerry Nadu in the garage. Dick Bergeron. Well, you guys were talking about Dale Earnhardt Jr. a couple minutes ago. He had just about his entire crew rolling on the floor here talking about the car. They asked him how he liked it. He said, well, I like it a lot. It's loose. It's real, real loose, but I like it a lot as we're watching the lead side by side. Boy, it's more than side by side. It's two by two with Dale Earnhardt Jr. behind him. And they, they, there's 74 laps to go. And look at these guys. On short, short track Saturday nights, this is what we call four cars under a blanket. And two lurking behind. Yeah, Dale Earnhardt right. Jr. and Dale Jarrett. On your corner, inside. And that outside, I mean, you got to have the whole track to make, to make that pass when you're down underneath somebody. Or else you got to use them up a little bit. Tony Stewart is the one car that gained on that. He's moving underneath Gordon for third, but there's a lapped car ahead. Brett Bodine stays well out of the way, and Stewart will hold that third spot. Tony Stewart's car just after several laps, 10 or 15, you heard Zippadilly say, here he comes. His car's getting better and better and better. He's going to work his way right, right around these guys. And out of these six cars, Darrell, he's the only car that's working on the bottom of the racetrack. See him do that here last year, and uh, he, he just gets his car working good down there. When he comes in for him, boy, it takes off. Now, Steve Park also stopped for tires not long ago, and he's climbed back to 11th place. And we also heard one of the big reasons he pitted wasn't so much because of lack of maybe the fuel mileage. He was not happy with that race car. And Dale Jr.'s, Dale Jr.'s trying to get by Gordon as they go down into turn one here. There he is. Fourth the place out of him. Accelerates up out of that corner really good. Man, we got racing going on everywhere. Yeah, good battles even back at 50. Whoa, Junebug, not too much. Drove her in there under him, and she almost got up into the side of Gordon. Yeah, we saw uh, Kenny Schrader and Casey Atwood side by side for 15th, so it's getting pretty racy here with 70 laps to go. There they are. Uh, engine failure has put Kenny Wallace in the garage, we're told. Tony Stewart's taking a look on the inside of... Ricky Rudd there going down into turn three. I tell you, another guy that's come in this race, he's lurking right there behind these guys, Johnny Benson. Benson's been hanging around the top half dozen all night. You know, it's funny, these same guys end up at the front every week. Race along, race along. You don't talk about Johnny Benson much. You don't talk about some of these guys, Dale Jarrett. All of a sudden, they're up there racing for the lead. That's the reason they're up there in the points as well. Exactly right. right. Miller Light Cam from Rusty looking back at Ricky Rudd. First to second place. Outside is clear. Clear all around. Blaney. Johnny Benson and Dale Jarrett. Matt. Mike Johnny Benson has struggled all weekend trying to dial in this 10 car. In fact, right before the race, crew chief James is told me they made so many changes. Shocks, springs, sway bar, truck arms, nose weight, wedge, you name it, they did it. They were going to gamble. They said it would either be a very long night or they would get lucky. Looks like they're getting lucky because Johnny has finally found the handle of that race car. And you got to be good to be lucky. Well, and the thing about it is you go around all day on Friday afternoon, Friday night, Saturday, all day finding out what everybody else is doing. And then you throw a little of that at your car as well if you kind of get lost. Tony Stewart in that 20 car, that right front rotor, we've really seen it glowing. He's really using this race car right now, running the bottom. His car really comes off the corner, but he's really driving it down in the corner, reason those rotors are glowing. Look at the right front rotor glowing. And not only that, he's tucked right in behind Ricky Rudd. That takes any air that might be flowing into those brake ducts off of that thing. So uh, he's got to get around these guys, got to get around them pretty quick. And he knows that. 65 laps to go. No more pit stops unless there's a caution. Gas mileage may be a little questionable on some cars. It's going to be close, but they Whoa, didn't make it through. Inside on your Whoa. Inside, clear. 
Now, Ricky had to kind of lift up a little bit to keep him running in the back of Rusty, and when he did, here comes Tony Stewart. Look at Tony Stewart all the way down to the bottom of the racetrack. Inside, clear. Ricky Rudd on that high side, though, kept that momentum. He's not ready to give this position up. Tony Stewart all the way to the bottom again. Got a little bit loose right there when he jumped back in the throttle off turn four. Rudd That's can't it. give it up, Larry. If he gives it up, he'll never get it back. No, this is, this is for the marbles here, boys. That outside line, that good traction, that good forward bite they get up high back there is really paying off for Ricky Rudd. 63 laps to go. Wallace, Rudd, Stewart, Gordon, who's going to win the Pontiac Excitement 400? Fifty-seven laps to go here at Richmond. Next Saturday, Mother's Day weekend, the NASCAR Bush Series in action on FX at New Hampshire International Speedway. If you're buying tickets, come on up. The Bush North Series is in action, too, in the doubleheader, but we'll have the Bush Series at 12.30 Eastern time for you right here on FX a week from today. Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd, Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, Johnny Benson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Dale Jarrett, Steve Park, Jeff Burton, and Matt Kizer are the top ten. As long as uh, Ricky can and uh, Tony Stewart race each other, Rusty can get away a little bit. As soon as they quit racing each other, they can catch right back up to Rusty. So what Tony Stewart needs to do is lay off for Ricky here for a few laps and let him see if he can do anything with Rusty. Rusty's car slows down a little bit at the end of these long runs. Only four cars out of the race. Ricky Craven, Andy Houston, Jerry Nadeau, and the man who's with Jeannie in the garage. Kenny Wallace wondering if Geico can come replace his motor right away. What happened? All of a sudden we saw you pull back here to the garage area. Well, the Geico Auto Parts stuff. Auto insurance car blew up. It's really loud down here. Absolutely. I just want to thank Geico Auto Insurance. You know, we came here unsponsored. It's a big race for us. We run good, 17th or 18th, but this little lizard was supposed to bring us good luck, and it didn't. I hope everybody got some uh, good in-car shots. Showed my feet and my hands. We did enjoy the work. You're going to be back next week, or the week after, I should say. What's your future hold? My future's so bright, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just racing my heart out. You know, uh, we need to sign this guy for our insurance up to help us out, and we'll be at Charlotte. But I can't thank everybody enough for getting us here enough. For anybody who thinks there's any hard feelings between me and Andy Petrie, I just found out before the race that they were going to feel a car for me if I wasn't going to be able to come here so up. Uh, everything's great. We'll be all right. All right. We look forward to seeing you in Charlotte then. Thanks. That's pretty neat. He left Andy Petrie racing at the end of last season to drive for this Jack Birmingham-owned team. And Tony just, Tony just now got around the 28 car. I think that spells bad news for Rusty Wallace. We've got 50 laps to go, and we're going to see, uh, see if Rusty can hold him off for a while. But I just don't know. Tony's awfully strong off the corner. And, Darrell, it won't be but just a few laps. They're going to catch a lot of lap cars that could play a role in this as well. Rusty's car looks really good. I mean, you couldn't ask for a car to be better, but Tony's car just got like it's got more gear in it almost. It jumps up off the corner so hard. Let's see how Fox Tracks can tell us where Stewart is better than Wallace. Looks like Rusty's a little better getting into turn one. Right there. That's where he's so strong coming up off the up bottom of the corner, three. man. I'll tell you, he, he launches out there. Sometimes you think something happened to the car in front of him. Seems to lose just a yep. little bit down that front stretch, but right here, watch turn two. Boy, he look at that thing. Look at that thing come up out of there. He chopped a half a second, almost oh, over a second. And, look at there. And every bit of that was on exit. Jeff? Again, guys, let's go back and think about what Greg Zipidelli said early on. Hey, we drop a lot of air pressure out of our tires for the long run. And this is where this car is really starting to become really strong. It's toward the end of this run. And the thing that'll do, Jeff, is it'll give it that forward bite. We heard him complain a little bit about forward bite early in the race. Drop that air way down, and that thing will get a bite up off the corner. And, and it's showing so big right now because he can get back in that throttle at will and drive it up off the corner. And you've got to be able to do it here at Richmond if you want to win. Gordon working on Rudd on the inside. I believe Rudd used his stuff up trying to hold Stewart off. I think he just...
kept driving it down in there, driving it down in there, and I think he's probably used his stuff up. Johnny Benson in that 10 car. He's getting stronger as we get into this long run here with about 45 laps to go. He's all over the back bumper of Jeff Gordon in that 24. Gordon trying to take advantage of Rudd, almost got taken advantage of with Benson on the bottom. Let's ride along with Johnny. Boy, Benson is just having a great run. He has caught these guys, and he's been right there. He's a little quicker than they are. He's just having a great year. He comes to Richmond third in the points. These guys, they're there every week. Here goes Stewart. He's looking the inside of Rusty down into turn three. Your quarter inside. Last time they got side by side like this, there was a little paint swap. Also side by side for third. But for the lead. Stewart edges ahead of Wallace out of turn two where he's been so strong on this racetrack. They got cars running side by side everywhere, but when you don't have the whole racetrack, when you're pinned down to the very bottom of the racetrack, it makes it difficult to get up out of those corners. When you can use the whole track, then you can get back in the gas and let it float out next to the wall. Now the lap car ahead is Wallace's teammate Mayfield, but it'll be about four or five laps before they catch him. Side-by-side side for first, or side-by-side side for fourth. Side-by-side side everywhere. Stewart eventually should win this battle. The way his car gets up off of the corner over there, I believe that he'll eventually wear him down. Jeff Gordon took fourth, or held fourth, against Johnny Benson. And Stewart now half a car length up on Rusty going into turn three. Well, Rusty knows right now if he ever gets around him, it's all over. So he's got to give it all he's got. Right there seems to be Rusty's strong point, though, off turn four. He pulled him just a little bit. Back down into turn one and two. Tony Stewart all the way to the bottom of the racetrack. Gets that bite up off the corner. He needs the whole racetrack to be able to get it wide open and make that pass. If he could ever get ahead of Rusty over there where he could come up in front of him, he could complete the pass. All the more reason why Rusty can't let him get, can't let him clear him. Rusty looks mighty calm in there, and he's mighty cool. Doesn't seem to be worried. Not fighting that car. You couldn't ask for his car to be any better. How much fun is it, Daryl, to be in one of these two cars right now? Well, right now they're having a great time as long as they mind their manners, but I'm sure Rusty is still thinking about the last time Stewart was down under him like that. Whoa! Whoa. Rusty got loose that time. Maybe all Tony Stewart needs to head off into turn one right I'll here. He's going to clear him. He takes the lead. That opened the door. It's all over now. I think it's, uh, Tony will probably just drive on away now. See, he gets the whole racetrack. He can move over. 38 laps to go. Oh, all those cars under him. <laughs> Can't get it done. He Maybe some cars want done. a caution. Tony Stewart does not want a caution. Two laps to go. Seven cautions so far on a full moon Saturday night at Richmond. Tony Stewart leading Rusty Wallace by seven tenths of a second. Ricky Rudd, Jeff Gordon, Johnny Benson. Larry, if a caution would come out, knowing what we know about Tony Stewart's car taking 15 laps or so to come up to full speed, if we get another caution and you're the leader, do you stop? Or, and right here, Mike, we're in that window where it's tough. 30 to go to about 10 or 12 to go. That is a tough decision. You've got about 16 cars on the lead lap. Jeff Hammond, that, that would be a tough call. But these guys, they've got 70 laps on those tires, and tires are very important here. But as you well know, you have lap traffic to contend with, too. It's going to get down to that nail-biting time. This is like I say, that's what you get paid the big bucks for to make the decisions. If I'm the crew chief in any of these pits, and I'm on the lead lap, I've got two sets of tires sitting there. I've got one sitting and recommended in case it's a real short run. I've got one maybe three or four pounds down, where before I may have been eight or nine pounds down in, in long race trim. You have your tires situated, so if you do come to pit road, you pick a set of tires out so that you can get out for a short run, be prepared for that. And again, if you're leading a race, you're sitting there thinking, boy, I don't want to come at all, and I'm hoping I don't get a caution. And there's no question, Greg Simpadelli with Tony Stewart, those guys definitely would have to put air pressure in their tires because we know it takes a while for their car to hook up, as we've talked about. Larry, you know, when we talked to the Goodyear engineers earlier this week, they said this particular tire takes you know, three to four laps to get enough heat in to get grip in it. So that air pressure is going to be real important if they do have a late caution. 
Now, Tony Stewart is getting into lap traffic, and he's about to come up on lead lap cars, beginning with Jimmy Spencer and then Casey Atwood. Darrell, if the caution comes out, do you want tires or do you want to stay out? I'd stay out. Uh, I'd, I'd make the guys behind me. I'd stay out, and that would force some of the cars to stay out with me. Then some of the other cars at the back maybe would try to come down pit road, and I don't think they'd have time to catch me. Let's see if this uh, traffic works to Wallace's advantage. Fox track showing you the instantaneous interval Tony's between car Stewart is, and Rusty. It's just so good. I mean, he can drive to the bottom. He goes in and kind of diamonds the corner off. And he's got such great forward bite now, accelerating out of the corner, that uh, it's hard to it's hard to slow him down. Rusty's the one that'll have more problem, I think. And none of these guys are going to give up real easily. I mean, you know, they're trying to stay on the lead on the lead lap. Uh, 25 laps to go here. Now, Steve Park's tires are fresher Whoa. than most. About 18 laps fresher than most of the cars that he's battling. Yeah, that steering wheel smoking in when he comes on. <laughs> and certainly this late in the run, that's where those 18 fewer laps on those tires could definitely make a difference. Yeah, that was a good move on those guys to come when they did uh, the last time. Sterling Marlin, the highest place Dodge in this race, still in 12th, where he's been much of the evening, battling Jeff Burton. Actually, that's for 11. Marlin yeah, moves just, to 11. He just passed Burton for 11, so Sterling's not having a, necessarily a great night, but it's a real consistent run for him. It's going to keep him up in the points. Pole sitter Mark Martin right behind those two, now running in 13th. The other lead lap cars are Schrader, Atwood, and Spencer. Spencer in danger of going a lap down to Stewart. Stewart is closing up on the back of Spencer down the back straightaway, and I think he is going to go a lap down. Tony got through that traffic. Stewart got through that traffic so easy. He the actually is just handling great. He actually increased his lead, Darrell. It's, it's a full second now over Rusty Wallace. Jeff? One thing we haven't talked a lot about tonight are the spotters here on the short track. As you can imagine right now, Tony Stewart's spotter is running up and down in that spotting stand telling all these guys that are coming up on, hey, cut us some slack, we're leading the race, help us here, help us here, just so that he doesn't get slowed down by the lap traffic. Benson, Park, and Jarrett battling for fifth. Steve Park had a run under Johnny Benson, and Jarrett closed right up on the two of them. Well, we got 20 laps to go, and uh, like I said, everybody's battling for all they're worth right now. You know, these guys have been out here for three hours, and uh, this is not an easy racetrack. Everybody's getting tired. Cars are slipping around a little bit. Yeah, the big difference between this and your local short track Saturday night 20-lap shootout is these fellas have already run 380 laps. And Park, under Benson, may make it work here for fifth place. Well, he drove it in there, and he's going to put the slide job on him. Put it he just put the big slide right on him. That opened the door for Jarrett as you ride with Dale. Jarrett says, let me see, uh, do I want to try that? Yeah, I'm the point leader. I better not try that. And Daryl, this late in the race, you forget about your rotors glowing. You go on and use what oh, you yeah. got about those brakes. Yep. This, Sixth place. This is that time, as I like to say, stop working your mouth and start working your hands because it's all over now. Benson holds off Jarrett for six. And that's, as a crew chief, that's what I tell the driver. That's right. Because unless we get a caution, you got what you got. I that's can't it. fix a thing yeah, now. Don't, don't tell me about your problems. I can't do nothing for you. I ain't your daddy. Now go. Stewart's lead on Wallace is now up to two seconds. Yeah. And Rusty has his hands full with Jeff Gordon. Did we not get a caution now? Remember, Tony Stewart, he was on pit road at lap 282. That's 118 laps. That's a little borderline. But remember, 10 or to 11 of those laps were run under caution. So he should be safe even in the end fuel, Jeff Hammond. I don't believe fuel's an issue. I really don't. But the guy up front, I know how those guys do their fuel mileage. I don't believe Greg Zippendale would make a mistake like that, not with a car like he had tonight. And Wallace, this is second place. And Gordon kept wearing and wearing Rusty down and finally found some room on the inside. Yeah, Rusty's car at the end of the 100 laps has uh, been uh, slowed down quite a bit. 
And we're talking about should I try to put the slide job on him? No, but you sure don't want to do that either. Boy, he had his hands full. Look Man. at his hands in there fighting that thing. Man, that's a great save. I mean, he had the thing underneath of him trying to make the pass, but it almost bought, it almost bit him, and there goes Dale Jr. by him. No pressure from behind. So Jarrett battling for sixth. Slides back to eighth. That's when you'd like to have a little bit more grip, but uh, the old tires just won't take it. Let's uh, watch on board. Dale Jarrett, has that happened? Woo. That was a great save. It was. A lot of momentum to see Dale Earnhardt Jr. and A-Car go by him while he was trying to gather it back up. See, Dale Jarrett's right front road are starting to really glow there. Again, we've got about 12 laps to go. You don't worry about those things now. No, your tires are pretty well gone now, and you're just really driving it down in there and slamming on the brakes and kind of get it woed up and keep it on the track. Now in front of Johnny Benson, Mike Skinner in the Lowe's 31 and Elliot Sadler are battling side by side. And of course, if you're Benson, this is the worst thing you could see right here. I mean, you need to be trying to close up on those lead cars and you're being held up by these uh, lap cars. Yeah, now they're two the laps down. Position. You know, they're racing each other two laps down, but they're battling each other. They're on the same lap together and any position is important. And Dale Jr., here's Dale Jr. though, he's caught right up and here goes Park, whoa. Oh, those 18 laps are starting to show. 18 laps less on his tires that Steve Park has. Park tested here in his Bush car, and he was quick in practice in the Winston Cup car. He said, we really found something with the Bush car that works, and uh, we're going to put it under the Cup car, and we think we're going to be real good here tonight, and he's up to fourth place. He's been fast all weekend. There's the serial scoring on Steve Park. I got a feeling that Park's going to be able to catch Rusty, and he might just be able to put that slide job on Rusty he's been putting on these other guys. He's got nine laps left to do it, but he's about three-tenths of a lap quicker than Rusty right now. Well, everybody's really working hard off turn four and off turn two. The cars are really starting to slide around and get loose. The 13th place or 14th place car, Jeff Burton going a lap down to Tony Stewart, who now moves oh, up. Oh, trouble, on. trouble over here in turn four. Stay Laney Laney. in the wall. No, no caution. No oh, caution there, yet. There's got to be a caution. I mean, he's going to stay up against that wall. Caution is, is out. out. Caution is out. Leader out of turn two. Casey Atwood's going to hold on the lead lap here as they come to caution. Jeff Burton may get one back or maybe Schrader. Now or maybe both of them. Burton pulls underneath. Here comes Schrader. And they both get back on the lead lap. Seven laps to go as the caution comes out for Dave Blaney. All right, there's seven laps to go. I don't know if they would have enough time to do it, but Darrell, we've seen this a lot of the last couple of years. NASCAR throw a red flag so they can get this racetrack cleaned up where we can have some green flag racing. At well, I don't think this, you know, I think that car is capable of being moved pretty quickly here. Um, I can't imagine they'd stop the race at this point. Six laps to go. Tony Stewart trying to hurry the pace car there. Here's what happened to Dave Blaney. So here goes Blaney driving off there. So Blaney drives away with damage, severe damage to the right front of his car. Caution out, it's gonna be five to go and the pace car has stopped to the roar of the crowd. The fans love it. We'll see green flag racing at the end of this race. Now, the pace car stopped to let the uh, track truck out to put down a little, to do a little cleanup work there at turn four. Yeah, I just don't, the track's not that bad. There's nothing really, nothing really to, to worry about, I don't think. Terry Labonte got a win in 1998 here in uh, this type of situation. Blaney the red is flag there. is not out. However, the pace car and the field have stopped. So. And Blaney is going by, here's Blaney right here. He's a... Uh, Come all the way around the racetrack. Trying to get it back in the garage. So I think they're just checking the track before they bring them around. And when they bring them around, they give them one to go. Talk about a shootout. <laughs> get all your bullets and get your guns loaded. Because we're about to have one here at Richmond International Raceway in the Pontiac Excitement 400. The red flag is out at Richmond International <laughs> Raceway. We have completed 394 laps. The field was stopped at turn three for cleanup in turn four. 
and so that we wouldn't use up another lap coming by the caution once again because NASCAR has full intention of getting this race back under green to finish off the 400 laps. That's uh, provoked a little conversation down on pit road amongst to, the teams and officials. He's trying to explain to them why they did that. <laughs> well, look at how many people are in this grandstand and it's easy to see. This is Brian Dehart, the NASCAR official. He's talking to Greg Simpadelli right now, Tony Stewart's crew chief. This is one fellow that they, he don't want to see this situation going nope. on. He wants to see caution laps being run right now. But now here you have to applaud NASCAR. They could have just run off the six laps and ended this race under caution. Everyone would have gone home having seen a great race. But if it's at all possible, they want to try to finish under green, and that's what we're going to try to do here. With Stewart leading, Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Steve Park fourth, Ricky Rudd in fifth. The rest of the lead lap cars are Johnny Benson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Dale Jarrett, Matt Kenseth, Bobby Labonte, and Sterling Marlin. Then Mark Martin, Casey Atwood, and getting back on the lead lap were Jeff Burton, Kenny Schrader, those are the lead lap cars, 15 of them. The Tough Man Heavyweight Finals. I think we're seeing it here, but there's a show by that name on FX right after the race. Well, let's see if they give them one to go as they come by here. I, that would be my guess. Uh, and I don't know why they wouldn't. And remember, Although we're, within that, we're the, in that 10 lap window, so no matter when they get the one to go, it will be what we call a down finger restart. It will be single file restart with only lead lap cars to the front. Now, Rick Mass car has not restarted out in turn three. See, that's the downside to stopping the cars. You never know how cars are going to start. There are push trucks moving into position. So uh, we'll, they're not giving one to go. So uh, I think they got to at least get all the cars rolling and moving before we could certainly give one to go. So now, at least two more laps of caution, which would mean we could have three laps left of green. Let's go track side to Chris Myers and Jeff Hammond. All right. Uh, well, Jeff, uh, you picked uh, Tony Stewart, so you're a little bit frustrated I'm about the decision-making here. I'm telling you. Well, I understand one thing. I've been around racing for a long time, and I'm not used to the way they're doing things now. Normally, if a caution flag comes out, you wouldn't have the situation. Now you got cars like an you know, 88 car. He may be out of gas right now. You, just, you never know about this. This is a bad situation when you run this hard all night long. Jeannie, what do you think about this? You're exactly right. It was just moments ago when Dale Jarrett said, hey, how much longer are we going to be sitting here because fuel is a concern for me? And the ironic part is he's directly across from his pit, and there's nothing his guys can do for him because he is out of gas. Get on the flat, DJ. Come on down, come on down. Big lid around a little bit. Trying to get some fuel in the fuel cell to the fuel pickup so that car will run. And the fuel pickup is in the right rear corner. So sometimes when you're not going at high speed and G-Force is slinging the fuel over that corner, you won't pick up all the fuel. Dale Jarrett Nothing was on yet. pit road at lap 282, which was about, 100 and, uh, about 113 uh -oh. laps ago. They should use a big brown truck to push them. Well, that's what they look like they got going on right now, Chris. But as Larry's saying, when the cars are running, there may be another gallon of gas in that race car, but because it's set there and gotten back down with the foam that's inside the fuel cell, it needs to be basically forced over to the right-hand side of the car where the pickup is to get the car refired, and he would probably have enough to complete the other five laps here. Well, see, they, they can't restart the race as long as they're pushing him around right. here. They got him out on the racetrack. And... Ready, I'm on track. Also, Mike Skinner is being pushed down in turn two. Man. Now, this is fair because the cars stopped running past the entrance to pit road. So all we're doing is pushing them back around to the pits. Remember, once the white flag comes out, you can't receive any assistance on the racetrack. And since he had to come to pit road, they're going to go ahead and put four tires on. He probably well, he not going to have time to use them. He had to have four tires. He's riding around on the apron. He'd have got all that debris and stuff on the tires. He couldn't have taken off. It'd taken him three laps to get them cleaned off. So uh, just a number of issues here that and it's hard to give them one to go until they park these records. Matt? Greg Zipidelli is Tony Stewart. What did NASCAR tell you? You had several conversations with them. Uh, I was just arguing because I didn't want them to stop and go to red. I, I don't, uh, I hate to finish under yellow, but uh, after the season we've had here, uh, and as good a car as we have, I hate to give it up. Uh, 
at the end there. Uh, we'll just uh, tone it up to dig deep here and uh, get a good restart, and hopefully we can uh, bring this home for uh, Home Depot and Pontiac here tonight in this Pontiac Excitement 400. Pontiac still looking for their first win this season, Mike. Thanks, Matt. Stewart and Gordon, nose to tail. Remember the last time that happened on a short track, Bristol, Tennessee, last lap? Need I remind anybody? No, but could be a replay because oh, I believe God. Gordon on the restart, I believe Gordon on the restart is going to be a little bit better than Stewart. Bristol, Tennessee, they were racing, I believe, for fourth place during the race uh, and afterwards. We have received the one to go. We're going to have a two-lap shootout. Remember, single file restart. You see these guys wiggling these cars back and forth, Daryl. That's so important because they got to get these tires cleaned off. Got to get the tires cleaned off. They're low on fuel. I mean, so many things you have to take into consideration when you leave the cars out there like this. A lot of people had headed for the parking lot, and the caution came out. They've all run back in. They've not gone to their seats, though. They have lined the fence to see what happens in these final two laps. Well, this is a, an ingredient for a disaster. And guys, don't forget, I know we only got two laps to go, but that car in fourth place, that yellow car, Steve Park, remember, he has a little fresher tire than anybody, and he was fast. I don't know if he was as fast as Tony Stewart, but he was definitely better than Rusty Wallace that's right in front of him. Yeah, he might be able to get by Rusty, but I don't believe he can get by the all the way to the front, unless right. these guys really get crazy down here. Stewart easing it, bringing them slow off turn four, and now he's on the gas. And we've got just and two Gordon, laps. Gordon's got a terrible restart. I believe he spun the tires when he took off. Rusty Wallace pulls to the inside. That two car Steve Park's coming. He carried them all the way up. Oh, the right there. Go. Wrecking down the front. They stay green. Todd Bodine got spun, but we keep going. Hard. We're under green with one lap to go, and they come back. Look at Rusty all over the rear bumper of that 24 car. Gordon got such a terrible restart, and it uh, really cost him a shot at getting up there and getting after Stewart. Last lap. There's a park right there. Got a shot at getting under Rusty off of two over here. Can't quite make it happen. Car spinning down the back straightaway. No matter. Checkered flag in the win. Tony Stewart, tenth career victory, first of the season. That was Elliot Sadler spinning down the back stretch as a lot of wild things happened in the last two laps. Well, that's basically what that's all about. When you stop them over there and get them lined up like that for a shootout, uh, that's a, just kind of a preview of the next week's race, Winston coming up. Tony Stewart's first win came here at Richmond in September 99. In his last three races, a win, a fourth, and a second. This is Rusty Wallace. He's pointing Jeff Gordon. They've been side by side ever since they checked the checkered flag, have a little conversation Everybody with each other. Good job. Good job. Short tracks, short sprint to the finish, equals short tempers. Yes, it does. And, of course, what happened there, again, Gordon didn't take off. He, uh, I think he spun his rear tires. That let Rusty get alongside of him going down into first turn. Got old tires on the cars. They kind of got together down there. That's just one of those racing things. I don't believe anybody be worried, should be uh, upset about that. Well, donuts. Crawlers. Just smoke it up right down the straightaway. I think he'll never make it if he keeps winding up like that. Yeah. Oh, me. Holding three fingers out the window. Tony Stewart embarks on the Polish victory lap. Made famous by Alan Kulwicki. As he salutes the memory of Dale Earnhardt and celebrates his first victory of 2001. This is after the race. Ooh. And he gets him a little tap. Oh, he's right checking. And uh, Jeff's arms out the window. And there's Rusty's response. Steve? points on Jared, and that was a big thing for me today. I was real happy with the car. And man, I tell you, it's got too loose at the very end there, and I fell from the lead to third, and not much I could do about it. 
Let's go to Matt. Well, Jeff, Jeff Gordon is climbing from this car. Jeff, what about your conversation with Rusty? Well, you know, he body slammed me pretty bad there at the last corner. And, I mean, it was just racing, but I was a little mad at him, you know. Uh, thought it was a little uncalled for. Um, you know, he got a good restart, and he got underneath me, but there's no reason for him to just slam me all the way up in the other lane. But DuPont Chevrolet was great today. I mean, uh, I thought we had a shot at winning there at the end. You never know what could have happened, you know, with the old tires like that on the restart. We might have had a shot at him, but we'll never know now. But uh, just really proud of robbing these guys. They, they worked hard, come home with another runner-up finish. Uh, you know, it's a good point today for us. We're real happy. What was Rusty's response? Oh, well, he's mad at me because of what happened afterwards because I just thought it was uncalled for what he did, you know, going in there. He, he said, hey, you know, I just drove in there and couldn't stop and drove into you. And, uh, you know, that's just, I guess, short track racing with two to go. That is short track racing. Mike? Kind of nice they can smile about it afterwards, at, at least for the camera. I was proud of Rusty. Now, you know, he didn't jump. He just nope. he said, oh, my car ran good. And uh, you could tell he was hot, and uh, but he moved on. Uh, but that is, that, that last couple of laps there is uh, just ingredients for disaster when you stop the cars like that and then ask these guys to race for the win. Wonder that they didn't have a few more tempers flaring. Our MBNA Winter Circle in the Pontiac Excitement 400, occupied by Tony Stewart and Joe Gibbs Racing. His first win since Homestead last October. Second Richmond win in five starts here. He's finished in the top eight, four of those five races, and he's the ninth different winner in 2001. Also, it's the first time Pontiac's been to victory lane this season. And it's Tony Stewart's third short track win. That's gonna make going up to Indy tomorrow a little more fun for him, I'd say. Dick Bergen is there. Well, thanks for the bath, Tony Stewart. Congratulations on a great run. What were you thinking when that caution flag came out at the end? NASCAR's going to take it away from me. <laughs> the, uh, I didn't need to see that. I mean, the last two laps, the car slid around all over the place. But uh, I tried to think of every restart I knew in the book and everything I've learned in 23 years on how to get a good restart with a couple laps to go like that. And uh, I think it worked. <laughs> September 1999, you led 333 laps at this thing out of 400. The last races, last two races last year, you almost won those. Now you have won this thing again. What is it about you at Richmond? What have you figured out about this place? I tell you what, Dale Earnhardt taught me a lot about this place. I followed him a lot of laps here, and uh, he just flat wear you out. I mean, you think you you think you're going to beat him and, and pass him and go on, and, and the next thing you know, he'd run back on you. So you learn how to save your tires and. Uh, he learned how to not abuse your equipment around here, so uh, I learned a lot from him here. All right, congratulations. We're going to go to Jeannie. And we're going to join Steve Park right now, obviously getting a lot of questions coming to the end of this race. The second time this season we see a caution coming out when you had a great opportunity. What were you thinking? Man, we were just hoping a caution wouldn't come out. Thanks, DJ, man. Um, we were just hoping a caution wouldn't come out, and uh, I think we could have gained one or two more positions because we were coming on strong, and those guys were slipping and sliding on some hot tires. So, uh, But all in all, great Saturday night. Uh, just want to thank Pennzoil, uh, Jim Postal, um, Paul Andrews, Chevrolet, and Goodyear. I mean, we just got a great race team here, and uh, we've stumbled the last couple weeks, and hopefully we got it turned around now. The fresh tires help to the good finish. Mike Joy? Thanks, Jeannie. Big celebration down there in victory lane for Tony Stewart with his first win of the season. The last four races, they've been right on their game. We'll be back to Richmond to wrap things up after this. Our Pontiac winning moment occurred at lap 362 as Tony Stewart dropped underneath Rusty Wallace and made good the pass for the lead that would take him to victory. Pontiac Grand Prix congratulates Joe Gibbs Racing and the wide track attack team on yet another victory. Wider is better. And a wild finish for the two lap shootout. Here at Richmond International, Stewart, Gordon, Wallace, Park, Rudd, the front five, Benson. Earnhardt Jr., Kenseth Schrader, Labonich. Ken Schrader uh, stayed on the lead lap all night, comes on ninth. Yeah, Pontiac had a pretty good show tonight. They got uh, several cars in the top 10 tonight. Dale Jarrett, run out of gas, had to come to pit road, only got back to 15. Not enough laps. 15 cars finished on the lead lap, and only three make that four in the garage area at the end of the night. One of those Kenny Wallace uh, tried to get his lap back a long time, <laughs> ended up 40. Yeah, too bad. Andy Houston had a great race car. He was involved in that wreck with Ward Burton, finishes 42nd. Now, Jarrett still leads the points, but 
his margin in two weeks has just been chopped down. Now it's only 14 points over Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, up to third, just 62 back. And look, the top four are under 100 points between them. Yeah, that 20 car, he just keeps creeping up in those standings oh, yeah. every week, up to seven. Wow. I wouldn't mind having short track racing about every other week. Well, I tell you, this was fun tonight. Under the lights and a lot of excitement, which we knew it would be. Let's go down to see what the boys are doing down there in the old hotel. Old Catfish and his buddy. All right, well, you know, Daryl, you know, Jeff's excited because he picked Tony <laughs> right. Stewart when, I'm, the, I'm when, happy. The, when the night started. So, and I thought I thought we were going to have... Right here with him. I thought we were going to have a civil war here in Richmond <laughs> between Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon. Watching you those two go out. But you, you, you thought the restart, I mean, you're, you're just adding a little fuel to the fire when you have something like that. Absolutely. I mean, when it comes down, you got two laps to go. It's, everything goes out the window, guys. It's time to get up on that wheel and get after it. Rusty Wallace went for the win. Hey, he got into him. It made him mad. But I'm sorry. I mean, he was going for the win. And it, that's the way it works here at Short Tracks. I mean, I'd have been upset if my driver hadn't made an effort like what Rusty did to get to, you know, to go to the win. All right, but fitting, uh, the Pontiac Excitement 400 was exciting for Tony Stewart in a Pontiac in their first win of this uh, NASCAR season. On FX next Saturday, of course, the Winston Cup drivers, Mother's Day weekend off for them. They get a break, but the Bush Series continues, and you'll see that from New Hampshire, 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific on FX. Stick around. The Tough Man Finals are coming up next on FX. Tony's one of the tough guys, as he will announce tomorrow that he's going to drive in Indy for Chip Ganassi, as well as run in the Coca-Cola 600 for his Home Depot crew. And a terrific uh, run for Tony Stewart, as he has found victory lane in Richmond, and it is a long way to Richmond. It's a long way to Richmond.